What up, what up? This is Dave from the Five Six Kings. And guys, I've been been seeing a lot of stuff online about people think Subway's desperate right now. People are like, oh, they're dead. They're doing the eat fresh, refresh. They're slicing the turkey so thin. Like, only desperate companies slice turkey that thin. They're doing commercials with Tom Brady where he's like, I don't even fucking eat bread. Why would I eat here? But Subway isn't desperate, guys. Subway never has been, never will be desperate. Do you guys want to see a desperate company? Look at Domino's. I want someone to explain to me what the fuck is going on with that company. Like seven years ago, they just did a commercial where literally that Chef Daniel, he comes on and he's just like, guys, we're, we're sorry. The pizza's been really bad for a really long time. And uh, my boss told me I got to do better. I'm really sorry. We'll, we'll make it better. And then like two years after that, they're like, you know, we know it's still not good. We're really sorry. But guess what? We ordered delivery from us. And if we, guys, I'm not making this up. You can look up these fucking commercials. They're like, and if we see any potholes on the way from the store to your house, we're going to fix the potholes. You don't even have to worry about those potholes anymore. Domino's going to take care of those potholes. And like, it's done. There's no more no more potholes, guys. What the, they're a fucking pizza company. <laughs> they're like, our pizza is so bad that we're going to fix all the potholes on your street if you get our food. That is insane. And that didn't work. Now they're like, within the last year. They've been like, oh, we got we got cars that drive themselves, <laughs> cars that drive themselves, and keep your pizza hot. Cause cause everyone's like, that's a big. Th- I've never ordered pizza and gotten it and been like, this is cold. And just stared at the delivery guy. Never happened to me. They're like, we got. I don't know how much money they sunk into these fucking driverless cars. They're like, we got driverless cars. They're they're gonna keep the pizza hot. They're bringing them to your house. That still didn't work. That still didn't. They brought the Noid back and the, the, to, with the driverless cars. Like, the Noid can't even stop these cars. That didn't work. And now they're just like, we're going to give away a million things. That's not, that's not hyperbole on my point. They're doing commercials where, like, if you order delivery for us, we're going to give you something free. We're going to give away one million free things. So order our fucking delivery. That is the most, a million things. That's an, uh, that's like an unbelievable number. We're going to give away one million free things. How long is that going to take them? Because it can't be every trip's getting something free. And then they're like, ah, it's a million. We're done. I, I, it's, it's bananas that they're just doing this. That's a desperate company, guys. That's a desperate. If Chef Daniel say their food sucks and he'll try harder, then Chef Daniel comes back. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. My best wasn't good enough but we'll fix your potholes. Then like, we don't even, we're not employing drivers. We got automatic cars. They just do their thing. We got a guy with a remote control getting it there. And we're, we're giving you free shit. A million free things. Guys, Domino's is a desperate company. Keep Subway out of your fucking mouth, you pieces of shit. Subway is the benchmark of society. They built this country. They're good enough for Tony Hawk. And they're good enough for everyone listening. Subway. I love you. Fuck Domino's. And please. Give us money. This the Paul Beach County anthem. All my Paul Beach County niggas. Y'all put the fucking guns in there. Fuck them six. Ah, thank you, Suave Smooth, for that lead-in. What up, what up, and welcome to another episode of the Five Six Kings Podcast. I'm David Breen. With me, as always, my dear friend and co-host, Braden Bullard. Braden, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I, I mean, I could be better, but I'm good. How are you doing, David? What the fuck kind of answer is that? I know, it's Could really... be better? Yeah. Of course, of course, you could be better. Right? Couldn't everyone? Yeah, well, why, why does that need to be said? Because you gotta, you gotta like leave room for growth, you know. Don't someone ask how you're doing. Well, how could, are you? When you, when someone asks how you're doing, if you say could be better, that's a negative thing. 
Like it's like I don't know, it could be better. Yeah, I just wanted to be a nihilistic <laughs> little piece of shit. <laughs> I, know, it could, I could be better, you know, it's whatever. I wanted to fine. Throw, wanted to throw the nihilistic v- vibes at you and see how you responded. Right. I'm glad you called me out. Yeah, because I'm actually better than that, David. I'm doing fucking fantastic because we're back with another fucking episode of the Five Six Kings podcast. All right. I don't know where that voice came from. It's your uh, Macho Man voice. I know. Exactly oh no no where it no! Came no. From. Hold on. That was so so. It was a toned down version of it. Way toned down. Yeah. But yeah. it was. But it was what because you did the you did the thing. I started with doing the with the, the fingers. Yeah. You, you were you were gearing up to go full Macho Man. Oh, bro. Yeah. I could go full Macho. I know you can. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> don't get me full Macho, dude. I've seen. I heard it many times. <laughs> it's, it's, you kept doing it during the during the fight the other night. And at one point I said, dude, shut the fuck up. It's one of my key impersonations. <laughs> I don't think I have. <laughs> it's either that or like, um, what's the little gremlin from Lord of the Rings? Is it, it's not Frodo. It's not Frodo. No, it's, fucking, it's, uh, uh, it's a weird name. Schmeagol, yeah. but it's but it's a different name as well. It's got two names. Yeah. Schmeagol's one of them. We'll think of it at some point. Yeah. We'll think of it at some point. Let's not, let's not get hung up on this. How was your week? It was, it was good, bro. Yeah. I guess the most exciting thing was uh, was watching the fights with you, David. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a good fucking fight. Yeah, it was. This guy was Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder three for the lineal and world boxing organization WBO. It was mm. WBC, WBC. Yeah, WBC heavyweight yeah. championship of the mm-hmm. world. It was a fantastic fight. Yeah. Tyson Fury got a knockout in the eleventh round, but. Deontay Wilder dropped him twice in the fight. He got up both times. Dropped Deontay a bunch of times. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was two big fucking dudes just throwing hands for. They were was, going was it, at it. Eleven. It was over a half hour. Yeah, like, wild. Yeah, definitely a great fight. I'm not like uh, too well versed with heavyweight fight, you know, boxing fights, but everyone's saying that it's you know one of the best heavyweight boxing matches ever. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah. So it's definitely, definitely exciting. Ali Frazier three was very good, but yeah. that was kind of because they were both. It was like they were. It was, it was sad. Like Ali wasn't as good of a fighter yeah, as he, was he like, once was, and they. It was like he took a long time off, and it was like his first fight back, right? No, no, no. But he was uh, like start Parkinson's was starting to be kind of prevalent in his life. Later in his career, it was fucking sad because he yeah. he was all shaky and then just getting the fuck beaten out of him yeah but uh it was, it was ali just wasn't as good of a fighter as he once was and it was a really close fight yeah uh this wasn't the case i thought deontay looked significantly better in this fight mm-hmm. than he did in the second fight and then he did in the first fight i thought this was the best deontay wilder had looked yeah and tyson fury if he keeps this up might go down as the greatest heavyweight of all time yeah Definitely the best defensive heavyweight of all time. Do you think that, like, if you look back at the other champions in the heavyweight division, do you think, like, how do you think they would do against Tyson Fury in his prime? So, I mean, like, it's hard to say. It's so like Mike Tyson. I, I couldn't say Mike Tyson in his prime wouldn't knock the fuck out of every single because Tyson Fury gets hit by Deontay Wilder. Yeah, Deontay Wilder's a very hard puncher. Mike Tyson in his prime. Would close that distance, I feel like. Well, and just the shots that Deontay Wilder's getting, Mm -hmm. if Mike Tyson was getting them in his prime, I don't think Tyson Fury's getting up. Yeah. And Muhammad Ali, I think that'd be a a better fight. Yeah. Stylistically. It'd be fun, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be fun if, uh, like, Muhammad Ali, towards the end of his life, boxed Tyson Fury. Mm. He was all shaky and couldn't really walk or do anything, and Fury's just teeing off on him. David, you savage. <laughs> yeah, though, I mean, it, w- it was definitely a good fight. It was definitely entertaining. And, uh, God, do you think uh, do you think they ever fight again? Maybe. Like three? That's crazy Maybe. already. You know? So it would be, if Fury, like, I'm, I'm spaced on the guy's name who just beat Anthony Joshua. Oh, the, was he uh, Spanish? He, no. You're thinking of uh, it's Andy Ruiz. Yeah, yeah. Who, but Anthony Joshua came back and beat him, and then Anthony Joshua just lost again. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Recently, I, I apologize. He's the guy's the heavyweight champion of the world, and I can't think of his fucking name. Um, like, if Tyson Fury goes and beats him and unifies all the heavyweight belts, mm-hmm. Deontay Wilder just keeps winning. Like, beats Ruiz, beats Anthony Joshua, 
There's really nowhere else for Deontay Wilder to go. I think we'd do a fourth one, but yeah, I think it would take a lot. To, yeah, it definitely takes some time, and yeah. it would have to be like... Deontay has to go beat other people. A bunch, and to the point to where it's like, well, what else does he do now? And then they probably rehype it up. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Uh, and, and Deontay Wilder might be, legitimately might be the second best heavyweight in the world. Yeah. Like, I think if he fights Anthony Joshua, I think he could definitely knock Anthony Joshua out. Yeah. Uh, Andy Ruiz, I think he'll beat the fuck out of. That's they're saying that might be the next fight, him and Ruiz, and I think he dominates Ruiz. Yeah, it's crazy how lengthy they are. Yeah, dude. Wilder's what That's six seven and six, seven. Fury's six nine. Yeah, that is insane. Like two just massive human beings. Yeah, so lengthy. I mean, God. Yeah. So it'll be exciting. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see what happens next. How was your week, David? My week was good. Watched the fight with you. Did uh did some work during the week. Nice. What was it Saturday? Watch the Knoll. Best, best victory that they've had it was in North Carolina. They won the game, and it was like, like last week when they won, it was kind of they too easily could have lost the game. Some shit. They, they made some dumb mistakes. Some shit had to go right for them to end up winning it. Yeah. This week they went into North Carolina and just kind of convincingly, they fell behind. It was fourteen nothing or it's ten nothing early. And then they took the lead, never looked back, and kind of in the fourth quarter, there was never really a doubt if Florida State was going to hang on to the win. That was really cool to see. Jordan Travis looked like a fucking product of Benjamin High School. If he can put – it's weird because, like, last season, he showed glimpses. You're like, oh, he's going to be really fucking good. And then he started out this year looking like he didn't know how to throw a football again. And then – Saturday, he looked phenomenal, had three passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, tons of yards, looked great. If he can put this together for a full year, he's a Heisman candidate. He's an All-American candidate. He's very, very talented. He just needs to put it all together for long enough. Do you think, like, you know, between the time, you know, in that off season, maybe he watched Summer Catch and... I doubt it. Maybe who knows? Maybe, maybe learned a, a thing or two? Who knows? Well, I mean, Ryan Dunn is uh, that's Ryan Dunn's thing too. Yeah, we all, we only see him put it together for one game. We don't know if Ryan Dunn really put it together. Mm. Yeah, but uh, no, Florida State looked good. Dolphins, they lost. It was to be expected. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett looked better than I thought he would have. The defense looked a lot worse than I thought they would have. But the Bucks are the defending world champions. They they have Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Uh, it's, it's tough to play defense against them. Yeah. We'll see. That that game was kind of going into it. I was expecting it to be kind of what it was. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. They should be getting Tua back this week. They play Jacksonville in London. This should be a get-right game. This should be a game that they come out and beat the fuck out of Jacksonville. Urban Myers like, fingering some college girl up in Ohio and <laughs> having to apologize to his wife and the team. So do you think that game against the Bucks is just... We're not, we're not, we're not talking about that game. Okay. okay. So you ask weird questions about it. Uh, I've said everything I want to say about that <laughs> game. We're on to Jacksonville. We're getting Tua back. They should beat the fuck out of Jacksonville in London. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, my outlook on the season is... I think playoffs are very tough at this point. They're one and four. They'd have to play out of their minds the rest of the way just because I had one of their four losses already. Last year they went 10-6 and six and didn't make it. So I think you know, they, they'd have to go 10-2 and two the rest of the way, be 11-6, and six, maybe make the playoffs, maybe not. Yeah. It's tough. Schedule gets easier, but uh, we'll see. If they lose to Jacksonville, my my mindset goes from – this team's close, but like not quite there yet. To what the what, fuck? What, what the fuck do they need to do this off season? Is Flores the right guy to be the coach? Should Greer be the GM? Like those, those are the types of questions that start coming up. But we're not at that point yet. We are not. Let's see what they do to Jacksonville this weekend. So let's keep them fins up, fins up, and then uh, oh, last night I went to went to the Kravis Center. Oh, saw Nate Bargatze. It's Any, a cool, fun last name. It is a cool, fun last name. Garbatsky? Yeah. Was that? Did you? 
did you intentionally mispronounce it or no i was like honestly trying uh, to bargatsy bargatsy Bar- bargatsy bargatsy there you go bargatsy okay. what did i say first time garb gar- garbatsy i fucking switched the yeah. g and, and then you the said bargatsby <laughs> like uh like the great gatsby okay. yeah uh he was he was excellent he had two guys who opened for him one was uh one was graham k follow him on he, he asked everyone to follow him on instagram it's instagram title guess what it is what is it it's insta graham and it's spelled g-r-a-h-a-m that's so clever k i love him love <laughs> this guy yeah. Inst- instagram k yep uh he was pretty good the opener was fine. Nate Bargatze was very, very good. Kravis Center, I haven't been there since I graduated high school. Hmm. That's hmm. a long time. A nice little theater. Yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah, my um, my ex used to live right behind it, so I don't like to think about that place, David. That's that's tough shit. Like you, yeah, it's very mo- tough. Move out of you. You live in Palm Beach County. I'm just kidding. It's a big theater. Move the, <laughs> move the fuck out of here if you don't want to be. Quit dropping stuff, man. Jesus. I'll move back to L.A. Yep. Ah, there's no Kravis Center in L.A. <laughs> I'm just fucking kidding. Uh, should I start crying now or later? <laughs> now. Now that'll give me the energy to go through this whole thing. I'll feed off of your tears. <laughs> Our brain looks like up. Just like licking up the tears. <laughs> there we go. All right, all right. Hit record. Let's do it. Oh. Let's uh, let's talk summer catch. Oh, dude, I fucking hated this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I could totally see why you picked it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like it, like especially in the beginning, bro. To me, it gave off like tiptoes vibes. I don't know why. No, no well, so not really. Not really. It's more like I, the, I don't want you overselling it for the listener here. I really just I just want just the the music like the choices of music I felt like they were picking I was like Dude, this is giving kind of tiptoes vibes yeah. right now music was odd but guys do not expect <laughs> yeah. tiptoes no no don't this, expect tiptoes not anywhere near <laughs> as weird and out there of a movie as tiptoes no no yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I love tiptoes this but, was a more tame movie than yeah. tiptoes was yeah but the music was very odd I felt in in, in the beginning at least kind of throughout it yeah um. But uh, you want to you want to guess budget? What do you think this budget was? This budget is just fucking throwing me off. Throwing you off? Kind of. I mean, it's what, not like, like eighty million. What no, you no, like, it's yeah, not okay. that absurd. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. it's, not, it's, not, it's not that absurd. Twenty five million. Higher. Forty million. Low lower. Thirty five. Thirty four. Thirty four million. But right, I feel like that's like a pretty good amount for this movie. Yeah, I. Uh... Because, like, Freddie Prince, I don't think, had been in really anything at this point. Like, the cast is good, but they all seem, like, for 2001, that this might have been earlier part of their careers. Exactly. To where th- there's no way the majority of this budget so went Je- to the cast. Jessica Biel had done Seventh Heaven already. She might have been the most... Yeah, but, like, other than her... Fred there's, Ward. There's no actor... But what do you think they paid Fred Ward? That's what I'm saying, though. Okay, no, I, I no, thought no, no, you were no, like, no, no, dude, Fred Ward. I was, no, I was no, like, what? no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, he's he's probably like one of the at that time one of the most maybe um, famous or successful actors maybe on the cast. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. What else but, was he in? I think. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, like resemblance think, wise, like looking I at think, the cast, I think he's just older, and that's why you think that. No, I mean, I know I've definitely seen him in a, in a bunch of other things, yeah. but. Uh, I, I, I if don't, I had a guess, I don't know where thirty five million went to. Yeah, yeah. You have how much they made? Um, yeah. I gotta I mean, guess it. Yeah, you gotta guess it. One hundred and twenty six point eight million. <laughs> so much lower, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so much lower, bro. Over half. Lower? Over half. Yeah. Did they make a profit? No. Ooh. Did. 14 million. A <laughs> little bit higher. 17 million. L- l- 19. A little over 19. Almost 20. There you go. Did. <laughs> they lost go. basically $15 million. I hope you're hope you're happy, Fred Ward. Yeah. They lost over $15 million. Yeah. All right. It's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. And, you know, like, honestly, I'm kind of surprised. Like, I'm... I don't know. Like, maybe just... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was the way they didn't do the marketing or something. Maybe there was a bunch of other good movies in 2001 when this came out. I'm not sure. But fuck, that that sucks. Yeah. 
you know <laughs> they're not happy with that are they Brayden? no no they're definitely <laughs> not what uh what do the what do the critics say about it oh you want you want one oh dude should i should i fuck it up and do it what i do every week no okay <laughs> no you should <laughs> Do it correctly. <laughs> IMD, uh, IMDb gave it a 5.1 out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, <laughs> it gets worse. What do you think Rotten Tomatoes gave it? 32. 8%. 8%. 8%, dude, out of 100. <laughs> what about Metacritic? <laughs> it's about the same. It's a 21%. I mean, not the same, but it's almost just as bad. 21%. Yeah. Um, but Google users, bro, they always just find a way. They give it like an eight. 74%. 74. Nice. Yeah. What'd yeah. you give it? I give it a 4.7. 4.7. Like in the beginning, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? But honestly, like by the end, I was like, you know what? They, uh, it's so like it, I give it a 5.8. It's not a good movie. But they were what they were trying to be. Yeah. If that meant, like, they're, they're like, we're going to be a fucking romantic comedy about this fucking baseball pitcher who mows this rich girl's lawn and they fall in love. Like, whatever. Well, Not winning the awards, but, like, it, it, it did what it wanted to do. No, yeah. Not a good movie. I don't be like, oh, you got to go watch Summer Catch. This is the type of movie where I think the writers and the director just kind of fuck with their actors like i feel like um jessica beale totally believed this was like a drama jessica beale was yeah i like i almost think the and, way they talked to her the and, way and, they and you know like she did all right if that, bro, she was she, fucking shedding legitimate tears crying yeah, bro like, on like, the spot she cue, did a like, good job for this to have been a more serious movie bro like she if made this, this was a more, drama if this was more serious <laughs> This might have been an all right movie. Yeah, and that's like, like she she did a very good job, like very good, dude. Like, yeah. she, she doesn't want me to go with him. Dude, like, 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 let's see, you know, I felt it. What's so funny is like the director was probably like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is so. <laughs> this is they, like they shot that scene like late, and then he's like, fuck. So I, I we did the wrong direction. This movie, she, yeah, she like is, she just did amazing. She is too good of an actress for what we're trying to do. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And like it, it's it's like she was so good. She almost made the movie something else. Yeah, you know, like I don't, and I don't want to spoil yeah. anything. She, I guess we'll was, get to it. She but. was so good at times, but then just so bad at other times. Like that. Well, and I don't think that was even because of her. I think it was just the movie. Oh, for sure. You know, like or like the and the maybe the the, the writing or the direction or just like the way. But yeah, like. <laughs> There was something where you're like, holy shit, bro. She's just like knocking this out the yeah. park. <laughs> it's just like not the feel for the movie. <laughs> it's like too good. <laughs> what, uh, let's go to award season. Oh, dude. How'd they do? Dude. Dude. One nomination, bro. <laughs> nice. Let's hear it. Dude, it's the best. It's this. All right. So the, um, it is called the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. Yeah, it is. David, like at this point, we might as well just start making movie award fucking shows and shit. What's the nomination? It is the uh, it is for the uh, stinker award for the most annoying fake accent, <laughs> <laughs> and it is for Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah, yeah. He uh, so guys, this takes place in Chatham, which is like a it's like a town northeastern Cape Cod area. And he does kind of, uh, there's some people who like fully committed to the, to the Boston accent and he kind of halfway does halfway doesn't. It's very like, it just shows up. Yeah. Like, like sometimes you hear it. You don't know you whether don't. or not he's choosing to now say it like that. Yeah. Like maybe he used to, maybe he used to grow up there and now he lives somewhere else. I don't so know. So he doesn't, the, the character doesn't. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no so I get what you're saying, but yeah, yeah, for the listener, the character lived there, yeah, grew up there, never left that town. But you know, like, should have a thick Boston, hundred percent. And if that's what they want, that's what he should be delivering. Yeah, 
but maybe they're like, hey, yeah, you know, he had that accent, he got rid of it, and sometimes it just shows up when he feels like he needs to emphasize certain shit or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, it was, but uh, it was kind of random when he was saying it. I, I mean, it was, like. it was the most annoying fake accent. Yeah, <laughs> there were some heavy ones in this movie. His was probably the most annoying. But dude, like <laughs> to name your award festival, the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. Love it. It's so great. Love it. And then for summer catch to like, and for IMDb to acknowledge it, like, this thing is legit. <laughs> <It's, Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, let me just open up my own. Let me do it on my mom's basement. Mom don't got no basement. I know, but like, I wish she did just so I could. So you could do it in the basement. Just to make it more ridiculous that I'm, uh, I have this, this award festival for this ridiculous, these ridiculous awards that. That IMDB and these big production companies are actually acknowledging, <laughs> like the stinker fucking bad movie awards. Absolutely, Freddie Prince went and uh, went and accepted the award. <laughs> yeah, he showed up. <laughs> he shows up at my front door. So I'm here to pick up my award. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Freddie Prince Jr. was a writer and producer for WWE. No way. For for like years. No way. Swear to God. No way. Swear to God. <laughs> was he part of like, um, recently? Oh, okay. Yeah, recently because this, this was oh one and he was very young. He was not not during that. Like within the last. It'd be great if he was helping like Mick Foley create the <laughs> <laughs> craziest great. matches. <laughs> great. No, no, you should come out with Sako. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Let him throw you off the cell. Yeah, Mick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but wild. Yeah, that is wild. crazy. How does he get that? How do you think he gets that? You think he just shows up? He's to Freddie Prince Man? Jr. and probably, probably like, no, him. I got it. We're gonna get him. We're gonna throw yeah, him off the probably, ring. Like, probably, probably express some interest, and they're like, let's meet. Tell us your ideas. And told me ideas. They they wanted to hire Tony Hinchcliffe a while ago. He's a comedian. Okay. He uh like had an interview with them and like pitched them ideas, and then was like, I don't want to go live in Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah. He's like, that sounds awful. I want to, like, Fuck do, that. I want to do comedy. And there's not a lot of comedy in Stanford, Connecticut. Was he going to write, like, comedic shit, though, for, like, WWE? Like, what was... I'm sure some of it would have been funny. But he yeah. was, he was like, storyline ideas, like, normal writer. And, like, okay. Yeah. He like, building backstories. Yeah, he, he, like he would have been a normal writer for WWE. And, and just didn't do they help do create it. characters? Is that specifically on the right. wrestlers? Let's let's dive down this hole. Sorry, yeah. Back a... <laughs> back in the day, used to be specifically on the wrestler. There weren't really writers. They would kind of throw some shit at the wall. Yeah, yeah. Like the producers would. Now it is. It's just writers. They come up with everything. They like hand you a script and they go, "This is what you're gonna go say in the ring tonight." And that's why people are going to AEW. That's, or... that's why wrestling sucks now. Uh, that's why yeah. you got to go to AEW. Yeah, got to have that freedom. Yeah, yeah. got to. Yeah, that creative, got to. That Stone, creative freedom. Stone Cold wouldn't have happened if it was someone trying to make him in a fucking in a back office. He would have came out with like rattlesnakes on him or some stupid yeah. shit and been like, "I'm the rattlesnake." He would. He wouldn't have shit on the Bible and said, <laughs> "Austin three sixteen says I just whooped your ass." Stutter. No, nobody would have wrote that down on what? a piece of paper for him. Not one person would have been yeah. like, you know, Jake the Snake's a big Bible guy. As he, after you beat him, you should say, you take your John 316, well, Austin 316. No one would have wrote that. Yeah. He just came up with it off the top of his head. He's like, oh, it's going to be fucking great. Yeah. It was. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Stone Cold. One of the great, best ad-libbers. Greatest wrestler of all time. Yeah. Nick had him at, like, number three. He's like, uh, the Undertaker's number one. <laughs> fucking crazy, Nick. <laughs> Fucking crazy. He had a great list until that point. Yeah, my list was shit until that point. Yeah. I got Ric Flair at fucking 14. Whatever the hell you had him. Maybe I'd p- Listen, put him a little Big higher. Show's better than <laughs> Ric Flair, all right? All right, if I could go back, I'd maybe redo a couple a couple yeah. spots. <laughs> but, all right, um, we, we can jump into I this movie? We can jump in. Because I am catch. dying to jump into this movie. I'm just thinking about fucking Jessica Biel. Why? I just watched Summer Catch and she's now she's just burned into my mind. All right. Well, we, the movie opens with uh, <laughs> David. I always got to say something weird before. <laughs> Freddie Prince is narrating it and he's like, When you think of Cape Cod, you probably think of beaches and seafood. 
Well, I think baseball. <laughs> I, I've been cutting the grass for the Cape Cod League <laughs> my whole life. And he's like riding the lawn, Dude. riding mower like through the backyard. And you're like, all right. And then, <laughs> and then another guy starts narrating. And you see who it is. And then you hear his voice. It's the actor who plays Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo movies. Yeah. And he's like, if you play ball, you want to go to the Cape. And then he's going, he's like, oh, we got all these these people who let us come stay at their houses. They're our house parents. They just do a quick, like, hey, all these kids are going to be living with strangers. Let's explain it just quick right off the bat so it's not weird when we talk about it later. Which I still found was weird. Yeah, yeah it didn't, didn't it make sense. Like, people let us come live in their house. It's just <laughs> small. They don't have but, trust I, issues. I never, they're I, a small community. Yeah. <laughs> these are young kids trying to make it. Yeah, they're, they're trying what, to play. Like, Trying to play pro ball. They're are like they right age. out of? Are they right, right out of high school? Like they're going. They're about to be in the college. Or they're, something? they're like some of them are playing in college. Already, M- okay. most of them are playing in college. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and that's it's the kind of. That's what I, I I knew that they were like in college. But I didn't know if they were like just graduating high school or no, if they were so, in college already. No, so like uh, Freddie Prince went to Boston College. Okay, dropped so they're, out. They're went graduating college. Went, and, and then went and played at JUCO and got kicked off the team. Like like Freddie Prince is probably like 23. So then what league are they playing in right Cape, now? The Cape Cod League, it's a summer league. Dude, they explain all this shit. No, yeah, yeah. Rewatch but, the movie. No, yeah. Rewatch I'm... the movie. It's uh the Cape Cod League. It's different towns up in the Cape Cod area. Every summer they have a uh, it's a baseball league. Scouts yeah. are there watching. Yeah, but is that like um when people are kind of like trying out for pros or something, is that like a league that they? Yeah, it's, it's I'm an, not like familiar with. It's an amateur league. It's, uh, it's yeah, college prospects. Scouts go there and watch them. Okay, good ones get signed to contracts. And this is like a a real thing. Like the yeah, Cape it's Cod. a real thing up in the Cape Cod. Okay, I believe cool. it's every summer. Cool, didn't know that. So. Yeah, every summer they go have a catch. I thought they kind of just like made some random league that was like outside of college or some shit to get scouts. I, I didn't know like exactly. No, it's a real thing. Okay, cool. It's a real thing. And uh, then Wilmer starts narrating it, and he's like, I'm so far away from... Wilmer Valderrama, by the way. So this is the kid from that 70s show? Or yeah. No- yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. That- <laughs> Wilmer, he's like, I'm so far away from home. And he doesn't say this. This is this is totally not what he says. He's like, and, <laughs> and the lady who... House I'm staying at wants to fuck me, but I don't know. <laughs> like, that's... He doesn't say those words, but that's exactly what happened. Bro, like, he's literally playing... Fez. Is it Fez, right, from that 70s show? Is it Fez? Yeah. Foreign, ex- foreign exchange student. Yeah. yeah. I, bro, no way. Is that, David, you're going to blow my mind right now. Yeah. I used to watch that 70s show. Is that really why he's That's called why they call Fez? Fez. Yeah. Foreign exchange student? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That, it, <laughs> <laughs> that blew my mind. Learned something new every day, people. If you didn't know that, now you know. <laughs> bro, because I always, I, oh, who the fuck names this kid Fez, but. It's Fez, <laughs> right? So then Freddie Prince is narrating again, and he said something that I, I just I can't I can't imagine is true. He says one in every six big leaguers played in the Cape Cod League, which would mean there's 25 people on a on a major league roster. Yeah, it means every team has at least four guys who yeah. played in the Cape Cod League on average. Yeah, I, just, I well I, huh- I can't imagine that's true. I definitely can't. I don't have any perspective of this, but is how many amateur leagues are there? I don't know, but that's uh, Cape Cod. Like it's not a, it's not that big. It, it of seemed a, like there were like ten teams. Yeah, it didn't seem it was so that, that that's big. that's every every year a bunch of them make it to the pro. Like that's I, I it could be true, but yeah. I, I don't think it was. Hmm. And then Freddie Prince is like, I want to fall in the sets of Bagwell, Bell, which I assume is Vernon Bell. I couldn't think of another Bell, mm-hmm. but it's Jeff Bagwell, Bell, Biggio, Nomar, Mo Vaughn, and the Big Hurt. Oh. Do you know who the Big Hurt is? Fuck no. Ah, it's Frank Thomas. Ah, the Big Hurt. He does. Uh, he does commercials now where he's like, "Yeah, I'm old, but my dick work." <laughs> yeah. Yo, oh. y'all, y'all bitches, dick work or what? Take this shit. Yeah, Make I've your dick work shit. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's Frank Thomas. Yeah, he's which, always... so he he just named like Mo Vaughn. I'm not too familiar with. Mm-hmm. I know the name, but Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Nomar, Frank Thomas. He he's named heavy hitters. Yeah, and he's like, now it's my turn. It's my last shot to make it. And I'm not leaving anything to chance. And it shows him he's like spreading out a, a sleeping bag. 
He's dressed in his uniform. It felt like this was so ridiculous. He's not leaving anything to chance. Yeah. He's sleeping on the on the bullpen mound, just outside. She's going to get shitty sleep, which is going to leave shit to chance. Yeah. And that, well, that's what he says. He's like, you know, I'd, I'd probably be better off getting a good night's sleep in my bed, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. <laughs> I'm not missing this practice. God. Yeah. yeah. Good and, on him. Yeah. And ah, then we sh- cut just to- Just keep going, David. This shit- pisses me off we cut to <laughs> the late great britney murphy yep who plays dd Dee Dee mulligan in this and movie this, and this is like her fucking iconic role for like the early 2000s i felt like i've seen this character from her in so many movies okay it's not dd mulligan you, you just meant no no yeah character. the character yeah, yeah, yeah. she's uh she's always like the fucking like the, sl- the i mean i i imagine sh- she died very young uh I don't want to make assumptions about Brittany Murphy's life, but I imagine she, in real life, was very similar to this character. Oh, you think? Didn't make great... Do you mean you don't... I don't know anything about her personal... She didn't commit suicide or have cancer or die in a car accident where someone else was at fault. She died very young. I imagine you don't make great choices if -hmm. you die very young, not to a terminal illness or being like like shot during a bank robbery or something. And David, you have always been I take it Brittany Murphy is very similar to Dee Dee Mulligan. David's always had the best judgment people, so I Absolutely. Yeah, so I Absol- absolutely take his word. <laughs> but uh she has a beer in between her legs and she's pouring <laughs> it in uh in Freddie Prince's mouth. And I'm like Guys, I'll, I'll go back I'll call him Ryan his name is Ryan Dunn in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh but I'm immediately I'll him, like... I'll call him one of those two names, this movie. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, this immediately just contradicts his entire monologue, but okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they, they showed up. What was he? He's like, ah, shit, Dee Dee Mulligan's here. She's pouring the beer into his mouth from between her legs. Uh, and then, like, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we got to stop. We got to stop. Yeah, and yeah. His, his two buds, Augie and Pete, are off the side, and they got chicks. And Augie's like, yo, Ryan, you, you're not a team player? That was bad. That was bad. I'll, throughout this, the the David's Boston gonna, accent, it's it, gonna get better. It'll, it'll. I gotta, I gotta it's warm bad. it up. It was good. It wasn't great. It yeah. wasn't great. Uh, and he's like, nah, no. He said, "Where's, where's your team spirit?" That's what <laughs> I he like said. It. Not, not, not a team player. It's sound, it sounding uh, Marky Mark. Where's right your there. team spirit? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, nah, I gotta, I got practice in the morning. He's like, we just want to celebrate our buddy making it in the <laughs> Cape League, pitching for the Chatham Ace. And he's like, ah, he's, oh, pitch for the Chatham A's with all these fancy college boys and all that. You know, we sh- we're proud of you, kid. And we wanted to celebrate. And he's like, just, just like kind of like guilt tripping him in. And he's like, ah. And he's like, nah, I got to I gotta go. He's like, all right, all right, we'll leave. And they're all going and leaving. And then D.D. Mulligan goes, last chance, lawn boy. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be working on the vineyard all summer. <laughs> I won't be working on the vineyard all summer. And then she says like a bunch of sexy shit, and she's like, "This could be your last chance to fuck me." <laughs> and he's like, "David's looking at me while he's saying." He's like, "All right, <laughs> all right, one beer, one beer." And then then it cuts. It gets it bounces around a lot in this movie. It's yeah, pretty, it it's pretty smoking aces. Yeah, yeah. They cut to Wilmer, and his house parent is like, "Hey, Wilmer, you awake?" And he's like, "I'm going to sleep." <laughs> it's, that's that's how he talks. It's they, like the literal yeah. character from that '70s show. And then like turns his light off. She's like, "I know you're awake." He's like, "I'm sleeping now." <laughs> like he's he's just nervous, acts very awkward wanna... with his facial expressions and his hands and stuff. It's it's funny. Yeah, he he does not want to have sex with this woman. Yeah, <laughs> he is very timid. Then um, Ryan and Dee Dee Mulligan are like spooning. They they clearly just had sex. Yeah, and she's putting on his boxers. And he's like, fine, if you're going to wear my underwear, I'm wearing yours. And puts on her thong and then gets up and runs. The sprinklers are on on the yeah. field. Gets up and runs through the sprinklers. And Augie and Pete and the two girls are just on the other side of the field. Yeah. So he runs over to them. And, like, high fives them. Yeah. Which so- is like, <laughs> you guys just had sex, like, 50 yards from your, you know, from your squad. Which I guess is, dude, if, anytime you've had sex 50 yards from me, we high five after. Yeah. Go ahead. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I reached out for a high five, guys, and Braden, Braden didn't reciprocate there. 
So it's the next morning. The sprinklers start going on in the area that they're in now. Mm. And Dee Dee Mulligan wakes up and like tries to wake him up. He kind of like rolls. And then she just grabs all of his clothes and leaves. Yeah. Not all of his clothes, actually. She, well, leaves, she leaves a hat, a glove, and cleats. And like some of, like, I think her clothing from the night before, I think was there too. Like something pink of hers or some shit. The thong that he was wearing. No, that was orange, I think it was, or something. I okay. think it was, like, something else. But right. but the sprinklers were fucking spraying, too, and that just killed me. I'm like, dude, the, it's hitting her. It was hitting her for, like, a second. It started hitting him, and he just, like, went back to sleep. I'm like, bro, no one in their fucking right mind is going to be able to sleep through sprinklers in the sun, on the dirt. David would. I, was, I, was, <laughs> I remember vividly. I was camping in Montana. And big storm in the middle of the night going on. Ripped the stakes that we had our tent out of the ground. So the tent flipped over. And there were other people in the tent. I just pretended to sleep through it because I didn't want to get up and fix the tent. <laughs> I I just had the rain pouring on my fucking face. And like one one of the people that got up, they fucking staked it back down. And we slept with the tent. But I was I was content with just getting rained on and sleeping. I was not getting out of that sleeping bag. <laughs> There was no chance I was getting up and fixing that. Uh, but was the sun just beaming on your face, too? No, it was cold and wind. Like, wind was blowing. It was pouring rain. It was damned, like, a horrible idea. Dude, it was, at night, it was, like, 30 degrees. It was freezing. And I'm just like, I don't know, this is just my life. I'm going to be I'm gonna be wet. <laughs> it was a 21-day trip out there. This was, like, day six. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just committing, like, I'm probably going to get sick. I'm going to be wet. I got, <laughs> And I got two more weeks out here. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> like, I'm not fixing this fucking I was, head. I was committed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I, I get where Freddie Prince is. Okay. Yeah. I get what he's doing. Okay. And he's fucking hung over and shit. He was drinking and fucking on a field all night. Well, what's her name's fun? I get it. Dee Dee Mulligan, she's, she can handle her shit, man. She hasn't. Yeah. She's, she's a savage. You don't die young if you can't handle your shit Dude, at one point. You know? fast die young. Yeah. What'd you say? Live fast, die young. Live fast. I said the fast, die young. No, I was no. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she leaves. She takes all of his shit. He, like, puts on his cleats still. <laughs> and we cut to the coaches. Get, there's, like, a team meeting, and he's talking about how important it is playing in this league and blah, blah, One dude, blah. dude, like, showed up a second late, and he was, like, said something about, like, you don't understand. Oh, he said... Well, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. means 8 a.m. Yeah, says the guy. Um, but he was like, "You don't understand," or like trying to explain the importance of like how of this opportunity that they have and stuff like that. Yeah, basically, yeah. they're just gonna be scouts watching you. This is the difference between you making money playing baseball and you not. Yeah, so take this shit seriously. And then Ryan Dunn comes running in, wearing the thong and cleats and hat. And holding the glove over and himself. It's like at, at that point, you might as well just call in sick. But you know what? It fucking were. His, he made the right decision. Yeah, I he guess. He runs in. He's like, ah, oh, sorry, coach. I was over there. And now I'm here. <laughs> and the players are all laughing. Like, it's crazy. And he's like, hey, enough, enough, enough. He's like, all right. Group up. Outfielders, infielders, pitchers in the bullpen. And then he goes and talks to Ryan Dunn. And he's like, that's strike two. He's like, I heard what happened at that junior college. That was strike one. Uh, we find out later. It, it kind of just subtly gets brought up. He, Yeah, very subtly. He dropped out of Boston College and then went to Framingham State, which is a junior college, and fought a teammate. That's all we know. He got kicked yeah. off the team for fighting a teammate. So this is strike two. And he's like, look, I know you had a loss in your personal life, but I don't have room for some wise-ass local who's going to be fucking around and not taking stuff seriously, thinking the rules don't apply to you. Shape the fuck up. I took a chance on you. He's like, all right. Yes, yeah. coach. Yeah. It reminds me of the way I talk to Hoff. Does it? <laughs> no, not really, actually. I treat uh, him with a lot of respect. I was going to say, you, uh, you didn't do as good of a job as this coach. Hoff, <laughs> Hoff ain't doing big things now. Hoff, I, was, I, was about, I, was about to, uh, I was about to ruin this movie. <laughs> David just saved you all right there um, But yeah you know Sometimes I like to give Hoff a little stern talking You know just Just kind of 
tug his beard a little bit, put him in line. You think he listens? You know, if <laughs> if if he does, he better fucking comment on what I'm saying because he goddamn well knows that I don't ever tug on his beard. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He didn't even show up to the fights the other night. Yeah. yeah. What's up with that? Good. Good job, man. You really coached that up. Yeah. My bad. So now Freddie, he's going to work. He's he's mowing lawns and he's he's cutting the grass, riding a lawn, riding a, a riding mower at one of the houses. Just checking out, getting lost in Jessica Beale's body. Yes, Jessica Beale's in the pool and he's just staring at her. Well, and like the the camera is just like honing in on her fucking body, basically like walking out the pool. And they're and and he is just like fucking lost. He's lost. He's he's now mowing over fucking flowers. Like in the garden, he's supposed to be like outlining the garden uh, where the grass is, and instead he's just like running it over, just getting lost. And then like notices, so he like tries to focus in, and then keeps driving, gets lost again in Jessica Beale, and then hits like was that like a a bird pole or something with like a what was that light pole? Was it a light pole or was it a bird's nest pole thing? Bird feeder. Bird feeder. Yeah. Yeah. Bird what, pole. What do I look like, David? Yo, yo bird pole. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Everyone's got a bird pole. <laughs> uh, yeah, he hits the bird pole, and then she looks over and sees that he did that, and she laughs. They connect. Yeah, she she knows what's going on. She That little slut knows yeah, what she she's doing. Yeah, she was fucking, doing. dude. That slutty slut. If she, she wouldn't have been swimming in her pool if she didn't want eyes on her. You That's know? what I'm saying. She'd have stayed, she'd have stayed her ass inside if like she didn't if want she to Like as if she didn't know out. he was mowing the lawn. Yeah. She's just seducing. Yeah. Some, you don't want you don't want to be checked out by the lawn workers? Stay inside. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, him and his dad are then loading up the truck out front and Mr. Parrish pulls up and he goes, Hey, Mr. Parrish, you know, my son, Ryan. And he just goes, yeah. Uh, could you guys not park in the driveway? Just use the service driveway. That's Thanks. Okay. Gets in his car and then drives up. Totally makes sense. You know, it makes like, sense. But he, he said it like a piece of shit. No, I'm kidding. Makes sense being like, Hey, you guys mind parking in the, in the service drive? I have a service driveway. Which that's, yeah, that, that that's how sense. well I'm doing. Yeah. Will you park in that driveway, please? That's fine. But, but no, don't don't talk to them like pieces of shit. Like no, yeah, that. totally. Yeah. Dismiss what he says to you yeah, and just immediately. say park in the service driveway. Thanks, because you yeah, know he's Carlin. worth a lot of money, David. Yeah, <laughs> he absolutely is. <laughs> so like you know, he's just better than them. I agree. Yeah, without a doubt. Good. Yeah, guarantee it. All right? They'll be working me the rest of their life. Guarantee it. <laughs> uh. Dad then asked Freddie Prince why he didn't uh, do the Chamberlain's yard. And Freddie's like, I practice. And he goes, ah, how's the coach? And he said, I thought I told you not to talk to him. He goes, I didn't. He goes, well, someone told him about mom's mom dying. He goes, well, maybe someone's trying to help you. Which is like, what the- then that scene ends. I'm like, yeah, hey, maybe someone is. Yeah. Didn't really understand it, but was he trying to make like the coach... Hey, listen, my kid's a good kid. Uh, he lost his mom recently. Well, like, like so he's to... going to be, oh, okay, like that. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, uh, you know. I didn't really understand. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're Go, they... going to bat for, I mean, it's. It was because, he's... it was more so he's saying it because he knows the son is going through some shit. Yeah. Okay. But also, also, dad didn't do it. It was, um. We, we, yeah. we find out right here who it yeah, was. Yeah. So, uh, they show, like, he's driving through the town. Chatham's an adorable little town. Yeah, I would love to go visit Chatham. Maybe you know what? Maybe one maybe day start we'll a, go. maybe start a life there. Yeah, and he goes to Oasis Tavern, orders three Sam Adams, and the bartender is the guy from season seven of Dexter. God, Dexter's just got everyone, dude. The guy who managed the strip club for the Kashka Brotherhood, <laughs> that guy. He's the bartender. Turns out he's also Ryan Dunn's brother. Look in at this that movie. And he goes, now I heard a story today. Did I really hear that my little brother showed up to practice with a skirt on? And Which it's a thong. It wasn't a skirt. Get, yeah. it, get it right, brother. Yeah. Um, and puts the 
puts an umbrella in one of the Sam Adams. I think he was holding a skirt, though. I said, is it what? Like, there was, like, something else pink he was holding over him wearing the thong. Yeah, but he was wearing a thong. No, yeah, you're that's, right. That's the weirder thing. Not that he was holding a skirt. No, you're right. He was wearing a thong. But I think that's what... Just a thong? Fuck the brother. Fuck the brother. Right. Hey. And, and fuck you for being like, he was holding the skirt. Or you don't know for sure that he was holding the skirt. Uh, but I, He was holding some <laughs> article of clothing. What are right. you doing? What are you doing defending this movie? You know, and get I the fuck out of my face. I think she was wearing like a denim skirt in the beginning, wasn't she? I don't fucking know, dude. My memory is just I've only seen this once, David. You got to see it more times. That's what it is. Yeah. But uh and his brother's like, I don't think uh he says whatever the coach's mm-hmm. name is. I don't know the coach's name. How would you rate his Boston I don't think accent? I don't think he would uh he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who would be happy about that. And then he goes, don't talk to the coach. And he's like, fine. So, like, his brother talked yeah. to the coach. No, yeah, so yeah. He, he, didn't, he didn't strike me as the guy. So, like, he met the coach and talked to him. What do you, what do you, like, don't what do you... talk to the coach. And he said, fine. But can I tell dad about the skirt? He'd be so proud. He goes, oh, I don't know, Mike. I wouldn't want to disappoint him, you know? We set such high standards. And then walks away with his beards. Uh, brother's accent's fine. Yeah. It's not... Augie has the best, yeah, without a doubt. Augie, my—I I don't know who the fuck Augie is. I've never seen him in anything else other than this movie. Uh-huh. Augie might live in Chatham, <laughs> and they just found him. And they're like, "We want to be a Chatham guy." He's like, "Yeah, I'll be a Chatham guy." Yeah, we like your accent. Um, he then uh, oh, he crosses paths with Augie and Pete, and they're like, "Hey, let's go shoot some pool." And he's like, "Nah, I gotta, I gotta hang with the team tonight." And they're like, "Oh, okay." It's like that, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, not not really confrontational, but they're like, oh, it's yeah, yeah. fucked up. This guy, uh, this blonde-haired guy, his name is Van Lemer. He's mm. talking about how the Dodgers offered him $2 million, but that's chump change. He wants to come here, pitch a few games, show out. They'll throw in an extra half million. Freddie Prince loudly laughs about this on the other end of the table. And Van Lemer asks if there's something he wants to say. And he goes, nah. And then Van Lemer starts making fun of him for uh, showing up in the thong today. And then Freddie Prince stands up like he's going to fist fight the guy. And Shaggy from Scooby-Doo is like, yeah, no, let's, <laughs> let's walk. Let's go talk to some girls. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that part. Because Freddie Prince was being a douchebag here. And I felt like he's jealous that this guy has a $2 million offer on the table. And he's like, I want to get more money out of it. I just felt like from the from like a writing standpoint, they... Because they end up having, like, a feud, you know what I'm saying? And it's, like, you could have juiced up this scene just a little bit better. and, and Like, better dialogue, whatever it was. Like, you could have done it better to where we cared a little bit more about their feud. But it just seems so fucking stupid and petty that, like, it's just dumb. And know? also, they could have not made Freddie Prince look like a jealous little bitch. That's Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He laughs about that, and then the guy's like, you got something you want to say? And he's like, nah, I'm good. It's like a 20-foot fucking table in, in, in a bar with 20 dudes in between you. Like, they're on separate tables. Like, I, I doubt the dude would even hear him laugh. He like, laughed pretty loud. And yeah, that's, but it's like a it bar was, It wasn't music. like a... <laughs> like that, it was... <laughs> it was like yeah. that, and he kind of looks up. It's like, it's your fucking deal, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what's going on in my life. Yeah, I wish they would just like would have sat closer together or something like that, and I don't know, just would have done something dip like a little bit more to no, kind of hype up you. that. I hear yeah, you. yeah, but they didn't. Yeah, Shaggy brings him over to two girls. He introduced it's just petty baseball shit. I'm, I'm sure it's like that in baseball. <laughs> Absolutely, in the Cape Cod League, always. <laughs> uh, he introduces him to the girls as Ryan Dune, and then he corrects him and says it's done. He's like, ah, oh, done, yeah, and. F- Shaggy's like there to hang out with one of the girls. The other girl is Jessica Beal. Ryan like locks eyes with her and he's like, oh, that's my girl. Yeah. And uh, Shaggy's like, unfortunately, Ryan has to. And then he sits down next to Jessica Beal and he goes, sit down and stay a while. And then Beal's like, I recognize you from somewhere. Oh, and he's like, she's like, I recognize you from somewhere. And he goes, I'm a pitcher for the Chatham A's. They haven't played a fucking game yet. Yeah. What are the odds that she knows you from that? He doesn't want to say I'm your fucking lawn boy. No, yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm a pitcher for the Chatham A's. And she's like, I don't, I don't watch baseball. And then Dee Dee Mulligan shows up. And she's like, well, if it isn't my favorite lawn boy. You know, I, uh, I didn't get the job in the vineyard, but can I have my underwears back? 
And <laughs> he says, and just for backstory, he has, he slept there. He then went to practice, went and cut grass, is clearly showered and wearing clean clothes right yep. now. Hair and done. Yeah. yeah look, he looks good. And he says, I can't. I'm still wearing them. He didn't, like, come straight from practice to the fucking thing and he's like, these are my only underwear. He's done so much other stuff. Well, and, and and they'd be so disgusting at this point if the fact that he's still wearing them is bananas. And it's like, dude, you, you would be... You would have changed. There's yeah. no way you would have... And, and also, let's say you're wearing them. That's not your response. Yeah. And what you'd, be, you, you'd be like, I don't have them with me. What are you, <laughs> what are you going to make a bigger fool of yourself in front yeah. of everyone? And it's like... And he wasn't joking. He got, like, super upset. <laughs> like, <laughs> still wearing... Shaggy spits out his drink. Because yeah. that's the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard. Which it is. And then he gets up and storms out angry. And just Kapil follows him. Which it's like... <laughs> She shouldn't dude, at this point. Dude, it, that should have been it. She should have been like, well, that guy's out of his fucking mind. Like, this is where it's yeah. like for right. Like, if you're a writer, it's like, how the fuck do you think that this is that someone like Jessica Biel is going to be like, you know, what? I'm intrigued. Let me go follow this guy who's wearing some other woman's underwear that he just had sex with less than 24 hours ago. And I'll probably remember at some point that he cuts my grass. I'm going to go chase after him. Yeah. It, it blows my mind. Crazy. I'm like, you guys could have done something but, uh, better. So she falls him out and she's like, so you're a ball player and you wear women's underwear. Anything else I need to know about you? And he goes, I've been cutting the grass at your summer house for the last six years. And she goes, what? <laughs> yeah. And then he says, 642 Shore... Sh- 642 Shaw Road. No, that's the one thing on the accent. No one can pronounce the word shore in this movie. It is Shore Road, but they all call it Shaw Road. Like Shaw. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. 642 Shaw Road. Yeah. We also check the pipes in the winter. She goes, we? Goes, Me and my dad. <laughs> and then he gets in his truck and she just says, Ryan Dunn. And, like, gives him fuck-me eyes, and then he leaves. Yeah. (laughs) Dude. So ridiculous. So fucking ridiculous. And I... Well, I'll I'll say what I'll I'll say later. I don't want to... I don't want to... You don't want to ruin the movie? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully I remember later. So now we're at practice. Uh, All the guys are pitching. Van Lemer has a crazy-looking glove, and he's throwing well, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> and then and, and then Ryan's up next, and he, like, tosses the ball at him. Like, they were close enough for him to hand it, and he, like, tosses it to him, hits him in the chest. Ball falls down, and they just kind of stare at each other. He picks it up. Ryan's a lefty, and he's, he's throwing like a champ. Looks, yeah, he's a fucking looks champ. Looks good. You have, so it was weird. Shaggy was not his catcher. It was a different guy catching. They were doing, like, a little bullpen throwing session. Different guy's catching. But you can hear Shaggy while he's throwing. He's like, well, pow! How you like me now? Like, he's just, like, yelling. Like, every pitch he throws, he's like, yeah! I didn't even notice that. So, what, they just had him do, like, some ADR work over this guy that filled in for him? Yeah, it was a different catcher. That's or, so, and so then, But, like, it's the practice. He's a catcher. He probably wouldn't be somewhere else. Is it supposed like, to be, like... he could be standing on the side I was doing gonna it, say, but have him catch. Yeah, I was going to say, like, they didn't make it seem like he was on the sideline screaming that, did they? They didn't show him anywhere. You just hear his voice so you, doing So you that. think he's the catcher? Yeah, he is the, he's the catcher. No, no, I know. I, the yeah, rest yeah. of the game, every time someone's yeah, pitching, yeah. he is catching. No, yeah, it, that, that, is, that is right. So, yeah, I didn't notice that. That's funny. Wow. Um, practice is over. They're walking off, and Shaggy's talking to this other player. He's an outfielder. I don't know his, the actor's name or his name. He's not in anything else that I can think of. He's the outfielder. And he's... Uh, He's like, oh, Ryan, where'd you go? This, this guy met twins last night. And he goes, yeah? And then Shaggy goes, a girl so big, I thought she was twins. <laughs> she was fucking fat, man. Like, <laughs> just really, like, laying it on. Dude, there's got to be a writer that had something against, like... For sure. Like, an ex-wife that was just, like, for sure. and, out I, of and, shape. And, but, but, you know, like, we're going to get to it, and I, I got shit to say about it later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Shaggy <laughs> tells Freddie, Freddie Prince, that Jessica Beale was asking about him, and he said they were going to go... 
uh, meet her and Lauren for some ice cream later. Is that cool? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And yeah, then, you can and tell he's he, like happy to hear that. And then he tells the outfielder, he's like, you can come too. There's got to be at least one fat chick at the ice cream shop. <laughs> Great line. Yeah, but that was actually, you know, like, I actually thought that was a good funny line. Yeah. He gets home and uh, his dad's like working in the garage, like fixing a mower or something. And he walks up and he goes, yeah, I got some burgers in there. And he goes, I stopped at the deli. He's like, all right. Uh, oh, and he said, he, he asked about like someone's lawn. Next thing he's like, I, get, I got a game tomorrow. He goes, you pitching? He goes, nah, this is Kid Van Lemer. He goes, is he good? <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, he's good. Throws hard. He goes, hotter than you? Not a lot of guys throw hotter than you. And he's like, all right, well. I'm going uh, to get out of here. Like, <laughs> Let me know about those lawns. One way or another, they got to get done. It must be a pretty successful lawn business. I mean, he is just cracking the whip. He's doing, he's doing all. It's him and his son. Yeah. Got a bunch of houses. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. They uh, they show up to where the ice cream shop is, and there's this little redhead girl. She has baseball cards, and she knows all about Freddie Prince and Shaggy, and she's stoked, gets their autographs. Turns out she's Jessica Biel's sister. Jessica Biel shows up. Do they have baseball cards for? I'm, sure. I'm like I'm sure. I'm sure everyone's got baseball cards. Yeah, yeah. They okay. they, was, they, 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 they could make them in the Cape Cod League. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's not that far fetched. Okay. Uh, they were also big time college prospects at times. Okay. So yeah. could have. Yeah. Turns out she's Jessica Biel's sister, and she's going to be the Chatham A's mascot. Freddie Prince is like, oh, that's great. He's like, but what is the A's mascot? She's like, I'm still working it out. Maybe it's a big fuzzy dog. And then Shaggy goes, the Chatham fuzzy dogs go fuzzy dogs. Oh, woo, 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 woo. I love the fuzzy dogs. That was like his literal audition for his character in Scooby Doo. Shaggy. There you go. Yeah. Like, come Crush. on, think about it, right? That's why they got him. He like doesn't he do that at some point in the movie where he acts like Scooby Doo and like says. I don't woo, fucking woo. Know. Dude, how about, I've seen super quick. I haven't seen Summer Catch in years, but I've seen it way more times, and I've definitely seen it more often, or, or more recently. Oh, dude, I've only seen Scooby Doo like maybe once. Yeah, maybe I, once. I can't quote Scooby Doo at all. No, yeah, I'm just at saying all. like you can, know, you can know, for sure see him doing quick, that. I know Freddie Prince is in Scooby Doo. Yeah, how great is that? They're yeah. like, we can't split these two up. Let's get them both. Which is so funny how they do that with certain <laughs> actors. You know, they see the little bit of chemistry and they're like, fuck it, bring them on. Like, they're, they're, they're gonna be Fred and Shaggy. <laughs> yeah, boom. Done. Uh, we then cut to Freddie Prince and Jessica Biel in mid conversation because the next line in the movie is actually my dad has a plan for me from Jessica Biel. And she talks about some job with her uncle in San Francisco, but she's not sure about it. And Freddie Prince says, you want to be an architect, which means there was such a long conversation to where he knows about her. And like, that's, I remember watching it and being like, where the fuck did he get yeah. that? <laughs> what about Graves? She's like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. not at all. She does want to be an architect. They talked about that for a little bit. She tells him he has beautiful eyes. Dude, and I'm like, bro, bro. And he's like, is that is that a line? She's like, no, maybe. Did it work? And then he takes a bite of his ice cream and she like wipes it off his lip. <laughs> and then they bro. keep walking. Nice little, they're, they're walking down a dock. No, yeah, yeah. By yeah. an ice cream shop. Seems like a cool, it's a cool little date. I would shit my fucking pants, David, if a girl ever gave me that line and then... What, like which is this is so this is the part of the script this is part of the the script where where you for sure question yourself while watching this movie are they tricking the actors or not like does Jessica Biel think she is supposed to be like this is supposed to be legitimately dramatic or is this supposed to be comedic I can't get past what you said there yet huh you would shit your pants if a girl ever said that to you. And and wipe, yeah. I would probably start. You would, you would shit your pants, sh- dude. Like laughing, you'd... shit my pants, laughing. Yeah, I'd probably start dying laughing. Okay, would I shit my pants? I thought literally? I thought you were going a different route. Like I would just be so shocked and like. I was like, dude, like, what are you? I would you've just... had sex before. Like, what are you like? <laughs> like, like you're not twelve years old. Like that. That's what I thought. You were dude. like, I would just be so blown away that she said that. Like, how did they not start fucking on the dock right there? Is what I thought you were getting. I was like. What are you doing, you weirdo? Like, all right, all right, yeah, all right. Let's keep going. Yeah, um, 
but dude, yeah, I'm like, let me, let me get, I'm like, I'm jealous. Why, why didn't, I don't want a girl to wipe some ice cream. No, not, cause not, now you're going on that route. Talk about what, now you're going the route I thought you were going, but you didn't seem like you were going. What route am I going? Now you got me so caught Now you're on going Jessica in the Biel. sad, like, I wish I could have girls do that with me. Thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That you a- do sometimes as if, like, as if you're some sad boy <laughs> just, <laughs> who's just been all alone forever. Like, <laughs> what was the route you were going before I cut you off? Uh, d- dude, David, honestly, I can't. Oh, oh this, this is what I was going to say. Trick in the actor. Yeah, yeah, so this is what I was going to say. So, so, like, I do not believe that Jessica Biel actually thinks that she's supposed to be comedic here i do not think she knows i don't think the director or the writer have translated that to her i don't think she's supposed to be in this scene what you think this is they just like threw this together like last minute or something i don't think this was this was no, no, no i don't think she was supposed to be funny in this scene oh i don't think she was supposed to be well i'm just saying like how ridiculous is it that she's wiping this away and stuff and like acting yeah, it's, so serious it's, it's supposed it's, to be like a cute like well, let me get that for but you. But it's so ridiculous. It's got to be comedic. There's no way the writers thought that that was like a you funny You think the thing. writers wrote it to be that's, serious? That's not like out there enough to be a funny part of a movie. But like. They absolutely meant that oh, to be bro, like a this cute, is... like these young kids are yeah, on a date. Yeah. She's doing that. But obviously it's bizarre from like, from the way that their relationship has progressed. He doesn't she's seem in... like he gives a fuck and she is like head over heels for him, I feel like. And she's... it's just. Are you familiar with the dentist system? No. She has demonstrated her value already. She's an architect. She's got a good eye for things. She's wealthy. Her father employs him and his father. She's now engaging him physically by wiping the the ice cream off his off his upper lip, and now they're walking down the dock together. So you're saying this... she's going to nurture dependents? Yeah. Which she does. So this is an she's gonna neglect emotionally, which she kind of does. Yeah, she'll inspire hope, and then she'll separate entirely. Dude, this is such an orchestrated plan. Just that to protect is her own system. ego. That is crazy. Boom. Den- wow. She she <laughs> dentist. Wow. She is dentisting Freddie Prince in this movie. I just learned something very valuable. Wow. It's opening day. Uh, Shaggy and Freddie Prince are stretching together. Shaggy says a great line. Great line. They're, they're talking about the girls, and he says, so you mow her lawn, and now you're trying to mow her lawn? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a very corny line. They have, uh, they have a brand new press box, thanks to the Rotary Club, and, guys, they got Mr. Kurt Gowdy to be the new radio voice. Yeah. How sick is that? One of the things... Dude, lo- Kurt Gowdy! I don't know who Kurt Guy is. I have no they, idea. They make a big announcement. He's an old man wearing like a cowboy hat. And he's like, eh, everyone goes crazy and he waves. Well, Kurt Gowdy's a big deal. Let's talk about Kurt Galley really quick. During the, the Gowdy. Season, Gowdy. During that season opener that we're talking about, that announcer mentions that the hitter, Billy, fucking Billy Brubaker, that's Shaggy. Uh, Shaggy's character, uh, has been struggling with wood bats this season. Obviously, he would not know that. You know, prior to this, since it's impossible, since this is the season fucking for, opener. Yeah. For so, game. yeah. So. It's like, he's really struggling with these wood bats. Immediately, it's his second at bat of the game. Yeah. And, but you know what? Watching him at the plate, you're like, oh, he's really struggling with these wood bats. Like, he's, he's like, fucking tense and then just puts his whole body into every swing. Braden, what did he not do? And this he's, is why he struck out. All right. So, this is what I've always said, you know, ever since I was playing baseball, all my buddies, you know, who, who really were taking baseball serious, I try to teach them, you got to you gotta chop down and meet the ball. You got to chop down and meet the ball. Because if you're trying to, to swing down and up, what you're going to do every time, you're going to pop it up. And you're just going to get pop, pop, you know, pop flies, get caught every time. You need line drives right down the middle, right down the middle. Try to get to second base every time. That's what we're going for. We're not going for the home runs. No. The power will come, guys. Yeah. the pa- Look at Christian Yelich. Mm-hmm. Christian Yelich, first few years of his career, disciplined, high on base percentage, high average. Yep. And then gets to Milwaukee, and he's leading the MLB in home runs. Yep. That's what you do. The power comes as you develop as a human being. Exactly. You got to have the mechanics down. Yep. Billy Brubaker doesn't know that. And that's 
why we go on this journey with him in this film. Um, Beale's <laughs> sister is in a lobster costume. Yes, yeah, she that's is. The, that's that's the mascot. Freddie Prince is watching Van Lemer, and Van Lemer's just tearing it up. Him, didn't, and, didn't him so- and another guy are talking about how the Dodgers offered Van Lemer $2 million, like how good he is at pitching. Didn't some random um, guy in the crowd tell the— Not yet, not yet. Not oh, yet. my bad. Stop, stop. Bad. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You think, I, you think I skipped that part? You think I skipped one of the better parts in this movie? I just thought, oh, well, no. Yeah, I know. I know what you're fucking doing. Yeah, I know. It's later. Yeah, it's so absurd. It's I should have later. never questioned yeah. David. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I would miss that. Uh, so Van Lemer, there's guy in the dugout goes, "Hey, scouts to the right," and Van Lemer goes, "Quit drooling." By July fourth, there'll be a dozen at every game. And, yeah. So and wh- the guy goes, "Oh, sorry, Dodger Blue." Like I, this is a big deal for me that there's scouts here. I guess. Yeah. I was, oh, look at me. I play for the Dodgers. It's not a big deal for you. Fuck you, Van yeah. Lemer. Uh, Shaggy strikes out again and then comes in and throws the bat down and goes, Wood bat suck. Oh, Why do you think God invented aluminum? Uh, another good part, too, is his two best friends uh, in the beginning when they first started playing the game, like right before the game started, they were like, they both like said something that was so corny. I was like, "Let's play ball!" Or I like, said, "Play ball!" Yeah, two of them together. Yeah, yeah. I just felt like it was uh, it was a funny corny moment. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, the coach then calls Freddie Prince. He goes, "Ryan Dunn, get down here!" And he's pumped. Like grabs his glove, goes up to him, and he's like, "How you feeling?" He goes, "Good, strong, ready." Coach <laughs> says, "Good." I need you to go up in the stands and pass the hat. Which is, go get donations. I, I assume, like, you gotta get donations, the league funds itself, whatever it is. That's crazy. And, uh, Van, Van Lemer goes, give him hell, Rye. <laughs> <laughs> He's, like, laughing. He goes, give him hell, Rye. So disrespectful. Yeah. Well, His, and, and isn't he still the backup right now? Is he the backup or is he, like, third string or some shit? So, pitchers, you have, you have a starting rotation because pitchers don't pitch every game. Yeah. And the, like little league, I remember they did. I just like looking back at that now. I'm like, God, they fucking what? Like, who, <laughs> who cares if you win the the North Palm Recreational Championship? Yeah, that kid's really good at pitching. Don't let him burn out his arm at a young age. Yeah, don't let him go throw seventy pitches twice a week and like fuck it. Like, I can pitch once a week. Yeah, but now they they fucking burn those kids out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> rotations like in the majors, there's it's typically a five man rotation. Mm. So basically, okay, you, you pitch once a week, yeah, one, once every five days, but it could be an off day in there. So he did he know He's, that he was probably going to sit out this whole game, or I don't know how the Cape Cod League works. Like, it, likely if he's a starter, the odds of him getting called in midway through a game, okay, it's okay. not likely, yeah, because they have that other guy who's the closer, yeah. So I mean, like, I, I if I something not, happened, they would just bring him in. Yeah, well, he would go and close like ninth inning. Closers go in, ninth inning, close game, go in, like, just, like, Mariano Rivera, greatest yeah. closer of all time. He'd go in for the ninth inning, they're up by a run, and he just shuts them down. No one gets on base, game over. Yanks win. Nice. Yanks win. a boy, Mo. Woo! Um, his buds are sitting down the, like, out in right field, and he goes over there like, hey, Rye, what are you doing? <laughs> And he's like, ah, oh, he's got the hat. And they're like, oh, as, as he walks up, he's like, I don't care what you think. Augie's like, I don't care what you think. They should sell chili at games. And he's like, chili, Pete's like, chili? You can't do chili at a baseball game. I don't know why you couldn't. Chili? Yeah. I would eat chili. I mean, I probably would. The odds of me going, like, at Marlins Park, where food's expensive, and if, I, if I'm eating there. Well, it reminds me of Interstellar when they're like, shut the fuck up. If I'm eating at <laughs> Marlins <laughs> Park, you're cutting me off talking about Interstellar. If I'm down at Marlins Park and it's like, oh, you want a bowl of chili for twelve dollars? I'm probably not going to do it. I'm, I'm, I, I changed my mind. I'm with Pete. They should not sell chili. They need the hot at dogs, ball games. like yeah. Interstellar said. Do do chili dogs? Maybe. Yeah. But honestly, like, it's that's a lot. Like, because how often you eating chili dogs to where you're not shitting shortly after a chili dog? David, I've never had a chili That's, dog. You gotta eat a chili dog. I've never had a chili dog. How have you never had a? You gotta eat a chili dog. I don't even like you hot need dogs. To, you need to go to Freddy's. It's next to the Snook Nook. It's up in uh, fucking like it's not Fort Pierce, but it's kind of like it everyone's got me Google of, Maps. 
Everyone's got Google Maps? Everyone's got Google Maps. What does that mean? They can go and look it up. Yeah, but I wanted to say it. What do you mean? Well, I'm saying if you, I want to remember for myself. Oh, I was just saying if you were struggling. But Fred, you got to go to Freddy's Hot Dog Stand. Yeah, get, get yourself a chili dog, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Promise me you're gonna do it. It's a big promise. It's a big leap of faith. Trust. What have I, I ever asked you for? If I have. What have I ever <laughs> asked you for? All right. Well, you're gonna have to take me some time, David. Let's go right now. Pause Let's, no, not even pause it. Just put this up. Put up what we have here. We're going to Freggy's. All right. They'll understand. Yeah, they'll get it. <laughs> uh, but they're over there, and he comes out, and he has the hat, and the one friend, like, dumps potato chips in the hat. And he's like, what are you yeah, doing? I it, paid for those. Was it potato? I thought it was, um, was it potato chips? It yeah, chips. it was. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I paid for those chips. He's like, yeah. we got chips. We got beer. What are you, what are you even doing? <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right. Just stop. Pe- people are looking. Uh... Oh, the guy who had sex with a fat girl. Fuck yeah. The second to last out of the game. Sick play. Guy hits what is a home run, and he doesn't just rob it. He completely dives over and clears the outfield fence. Catches the ball. Like. He deserves whatever you want. Greatest wants. catch in baseball history is what he made here. Yeah. Makes it, gets the out, throws it in, then Van Lemer gets the next guy to pop out. Throws a complete game shutout. Van Lemer is a stud. The fucking stud. Then uh, after the game, Shaggy's talking about how shitty he played to the guy who had sex with the fat girl. And Freddie Prince walks up and he's like, hey, I need you to help me. I got the splinter. And when he said splinter, I thought he's making fun of him because of the whole wood bat thing. But then he goes, in my ass. Do you think because he sat on the bench all game? Yeah. That's what, yeah. I, thought he's, I thought he's fucking with Shaggy. Yeah. And he's like, splinter because he can't do the wood bats. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, you fucking loser. But no. Nah, it's just because he was just sitting on the fucking bench. Yeah. We're back at Oasis Tavern. Van Lemer is shaking hands with everybody. Strip club guy from, uh, the strip club manager from Dexter shoots him a weird look. You can tell he's not impressed with Van Lemer. The outfielder is talking to another girl. And here's, here's the thing. Here's where it's gonna, it's gonna start for me. The girls he's with... They aren't, like, in awesome shape. Yeah. But they're not girls that you would, like, go out and see and be like, oh, she's fucking fat. Yeah. They're, like, they're, they're, they're bigger. But, but they're n- not to the point, like, if Brayden had sex with a girl who looked like that, I wouldn't be like, oh, you're fucking that fatty, huh? Yeah. No, yeah, and that's exactly what I thought, too. I was like, that that's a little ridiculous. Like, I felt like... They should have been more over the top. Because now it's like, well, if this is how you're portraying someone who, as a collective, that's, as a film... That's a fat girl that your friends are going to make fun of you for having sex with. Yeah, which I found ridiculous. I'm like, these aren't... I mean, regardless, <laughs> this is, it shouldn't bad shame. But, but, like, these girls aren't... Fat to the way, to the degree that they're making it seem. No, you shouldn't fat shame, but if you're going to, if you must, yeah, make them obese. Yeah, exactly. Make, make them actually like, oh, that's a fat girl. Oh, that's really unhealthy, and someone should not live yeah. their life like this. You, you know, yeah, even even Shaggy later looks at the girl, and the girl's the girl's not that fat, and he's like, man, that is unhealthy. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 she <laughs> says that. Yeah, 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 or he says that. That yeah, is yeah. unhealthy. Yeah, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> This is so disrespectful, bro, to, like, to, like, any girl around this size because they're not really fat. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. like, it's, it's fucking crazy. Dude, it, it's, it's, so really, it's, like, who, whatever writer wrote this part or collaborated on, on these jokes. Scumbag. Dude, and he's got some issue. I, one of his exes is just fat and took or advantage maybe, of him or, or something. Or maybe whoever did the casting is a scumbag. Yeah. 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 One, one of them. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, we're both. Both. But, like, that's... So now Wilmer is sitting at the table with Shaggy, and Shaggy calls the outfielder over from the that fat-ass bitch he's talking to over there. Yeah. And <laughs> he's like, all right, Wilmer, tell him. He's like, my house mom is old enough to be my real mom. And then he's like, is she married? And he goes, no. And then Shaggy cuts in. He goes, are you a virgin? And the outfielder's like, you don't have to answer that. And then Shaggy's just, like, being a dick, and he's like, you need to get the fuck out of here. You need to go have sex with her. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. And, like, yeah, and Wilmer leaves. Wilmer leaves tonight, and he doesn't have sex with her. 
So he leaves to go just be alone at the house and Shaggy's not be asshole. out with his friends. Yeah. <laughs> Shaggy made him feel insecure. Yeah. The, it's hard being a, you know, a fez. Yeah. The outfielder starts talking. Oh, he says uh, Wilmer has a bubble butt. He's like, I'm an outfielder. He plays second base. I see everyone's butt. He's like, Ryan's got a great ass. Van Lemer's got a big ass. And Shaggy's like giving him good looks. He goes, there's nothing sexual about what I'm saying, Shaggy. He goes, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Okay, all right. Freddie Prince walks <laughs> up, and Shaggy goes, hey, he thinks you have a nice pooper. And he goes, thanks. <laughs> so David comments on my butt, too. You got a nice pooper right there. That's every day. I'm like, God, look at that pooper. Just pooping. Just, poop. uh, I want to see it poop. You know, that's yeah, what I want. That pooper poops. I look at a butt, and I'm like, that's where poop comes out of. Yeah. 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 Who doesn't love poop? <laughs> that's uh, a summer catch right there. Augie and Pete beat Van Lemer and this other guy, he plays shortstop. He's Van Lemer's boy. Like it's always those two. I don't know if we ever hear his name. Yeah. But it's always the shortstop and Van Lemer always hanging out. Augie and Pete beat them in pool and like are talking shit. Like they're calling him Baby Blue. Yeah. Because of uh, cause Dodgers, Dodger Blue. He's like, Oh, baby blue, this is it for you. They beat him and then Pete's like, Oh, it's cause he doesn't have the right shoes on. He's like, Does does Nike make a pool shoe? And then Van Lemer's like, oh, let's fucking fight. That was enough for him to be like, let's fight. Let's Freddie, go, yeah. Freddie Prince runs over, gets in between them. Strip club manager immediately grabs Freddie Prince. He's like, nope, nope, don't be that guy. Good night. Get out of here. Get out of here. He storms out, storms past Jessica Beale. She follows him again. She's like, shouldn't this be the other way around? Girl leaves the bar and you chase me. And then she's super awkward talking about baseball. She's so like, you your outfits it. are cute. The way you wear your socks, it's, <laughs> it's sweet. or It's it's, it's cool. It's cool. And she's like, I'm going to shut up now because she was just being awkward and weird. Yeah, but just so just so great at the same time. <laughs> and, then, and then he says, I got a game today. So I got a game tomorrow. So I'm, I'm going to go. She's like, okay. And she says, someone left fresh cut flowers on my windowsill this morning. And it was really sweet. And then leans in and kisses him. And he says, I'll make sure they get the message. Now, did I miss that part? We never see it happen. That's what I'm saying. But, like, but we don't ever see it happen. He's the lawn boy. That's yeah. a cute thing he did. She noticed. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. I just didn't know if I, like, somehow missed that part. It's, uh, it's game day. And the coach is in the clubhouse burning a $20 bill. Telling the guys they got to knock off all this off-field shit. Because that's going to affect their pocketbook. Uh, cause obviously he heard about the bar fight and was like, I don't want to hear any more shit about this. Yeah. The, Which, you know, the like, new, you need to do that as a coach. You need, you need to just ingrain yeah, it in your fucking you gotta, head. You got to burn. How much do you, where do you think he got that 20? Cause how much do you think a coach makes, in the Cape Cod league makes? Yeah. Not enough. Yeah. Hopefully it was someone else's 20. Like could have been a dollar instead. Could have could have got wouldn't the have same. Sent, wouldn't have sent the same message. If he you burned a dollar, you'd be like, "Look at this poor piece of shit." I'm supposed to take advice from this guy. That's why Dodgers I'm... offered me two million dollars. This guy's burning dollar bills, thinking that means something. It means nothing to me. The uh, the new mascot is Clammy the Clam. Clammy and the Clam. Augie and Pete don't get it, and she's like, "Clammy the Clam, don't don't you get it? Don't you?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, Clam Clammy the Clam." Don't get steamed. Oh, Augie's just boom, boom, and then Pete goes, "Hey, didn't it's all in front of this little girl, by the way? Hey, didn't didn't I get clams from Dee Dee Mulligan?" He goes, "No, no, you got crabs from Dee Dee Mulligan. Crabs." <laughs> so, just real. Apparently, everyone's fucking Dee Dee Mulligan. No, so, everyone's fucking. So, like, that's a thing, Brayden. How come you and I have never? To my knowledge, there's no one that you and I have both had sex with. Nope, I don't think so. The fuck's that all about, dude? I don't know, bro. It's bullshit. Yeah. I want to get clams from Dee Dee Mulligan, and I want you to get them too. So we can be clam brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Open up a clam shop. Um, so that she walks away. She's Which like, is hey. crazy, because now half the town's got clams from Oh, from they Dee Dee. all got clams from Dee Dee Mulligan. Yeah. They're getting steamed. Yeah. Bunch of clam brothers. They're uh, so... Freddie Prince is on the mound, and it was Hank Gowdy. We're the Clam Bros. Hank Gowdy, Frank put Gowdy. On the Oakleys. <laughs> We're the Clam Bros. <laughs> <laughs> the the guy calling the game, the the radio guy, he's talking about Freddie Prince, and he's like, he dropped out of Boston College and then got kicked off 
his team at Framingham State for fighting with a teammate. Uh, he's, he's good when he's on, but he's got to put it all together. And it shows um, he's in a little bit of a jam. It's like the third inning. And then they got to strike him out, throw him out to get out of the inning. Great play. Way to get out of there. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, Shaggy strikes out again and looks awful at the plate. Black guy sleeping in the in the dugout. Just sleeping. Wil- Wilmer asks Van Lemer, he's like, what's with Knight? Why is he always sleeping? He goes, he's a closer. He needs his rest. Yep. Especially when Dunn's pitching. Mm. Which just, fuck you, Dunn. Um, we then get a surprise appearance from the stepdad in the movie Identity. Oh. Uh, turns out he's a scout. Ooh. Base are loaded in the ninth inning. We get another surprise appearance. Kevin Euclid. Holy shit. Who played in the majors for a number of years. He's a first baseman in DH. Played on the Red Sox for a while. Fuck. He's up to bat. Wow, they got like actual Kevin Euclid to come be the, the actor. That's where all this that Playing money went. That budget. Ba- the bags are loaded. Uh, Freddie... Freddie isn't trusting. They needed someone Billy to hit it out the park. Freddie isn't trusting Billy Brubaker. He keeps shaking him off, and then wants to throw his fastball. Throws it. Uke fucking crushes it out of the park. Grand slam. They end up losing. Or no, they, so they end up going to the bottom of the ninth, and two outs. Bottom of the ninth. Shaggy strikes out again, and then. Breaks the bat over his leg. Yeah. Which is hard. And right? I would like to think... Don't shatter your leg. I would like to think that they hired the professional baseball player to actually hit the home run. And, like, they just had to get, like, 100 takes. For some, re- for some reason, he was just he not... Kept, it was actually Freddie Prince throwing to him, and he kept missing. Yeah. He kept not <laughs> connecting. He was like, Ugh! God. <laughs> yeah. And then I wanted to think the same thing for Shaggy, that he just, like, could not break the bat. And they had to do, like, 40 fucking takes. His knees just fucking bruised up, <laughs> swollen. <laughs> but uh, here's my problem with this. Because that, that Grand Slam gave him the lead. Yeah. Why would you... You, you have the best closer in the league. It, it gets said a few times. The guy sleeping in the dugout, best closer in the league. Your starting pitcher is in in the ninth inning, and the bases are loaded. Why are you letting him still be out there? As, as a coach, you got to pull him. And it, get the ball, put your closer in. Well, isn't Win it, the game. Isn't it not, like also about the fact, too, that when you change out your pitchers, the pitchers are completely different. So when people have spent the entire game trying to get used to the way that you pitch, and then you bring in someone in, like the closer, isn't it like a big tactic or part of like the problem is the fact that like the, for, for the, sure it's, it's a different style yeah the closer i i don't know if he's a lefty done the lefty he didn't have a righty in there pitching so now it's just changing it up it, on them so much more changing all up and also you have the best closer in the game so really it's on the coach's fault it is it yeah. is absolutely the coach like, your guy's struggling you got to go save him from himself pull him yeah. out of the game put night in and since you rather risk it off yeah and he gives up a fucking grand slam and they lose look at that now he's at home, and his dad goes, tough loss tonight. Nine innings. Bunch six, of beers. Six hits. Five runs. Three walks. Eight strikeouts. And one big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking insane. Yeah, there's like and ten the, beers on the table. Like you can tell oh, he's, he's been, he's been drinking. drinking all night. Yeah. And he goes, I was talking to the... The guy there with the suspenders, he's a scout for the Phillies. He asked about your college career, so I made up a few stories. He goes, yeah, that's great, Dad. He goes, what, you don't want me to help? This is the most important thing in your life, and you don't want me to help. And he goes, I got somewhere to be, and walks out. And he goes, where? Chasing some Shaw Road princess who's trying to get Daddy's attention by screwing the Lord, boy? (laughs) His dad is 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 so out of his fucking mind. It's amazing. And then, like, he leaves, and, and the dad, you can almost tell he gets, like, sad. Oh, almost. dad's upset. He's like, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, he's like, this is my <laughs> <Immediately>. one. Immediately. <laughs> it's like my one chance to express the bullshit in my life, and I just fucking <laughs> kick the guy out, basically. <laughs> like, ran him out. <laughs> he stops at the house Shaggy's living at, and Shaggy is leaving. Like, has his bags packed. He's leaving. He's like, what are you doing? He goes, striking out in front of scouts all summer isn't what I had in mind. I already told my house parents I quit. And he's like, you come stay with me. He says, I'm going home. He goes, 
Well, at least come by the bar, get a beer and a bullet bullet chowder before you go. <laughs> <laughs> a beer and a bullet chowder before you go. Chowder. And then Shag, Shaggy agrees. Freddie Prince has one beer with him. And he's like, all right, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go meet up with Jessica Biel. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, I'll come visit you out in California. And he goes, all right. He's like, Augie's going to make sure you you get there in time for the time for the bus. He's taking a bus from Cape Cod to California. It's got to be a fucking gotta be a nightmare. Shh. And he's like, don't worry. Augie will make sure you get there. And then Augie introduces him to D.D. Mulligan. D.D. D.D. Mulligan. You just know. You're like, oh, boy, he ain't going nowhere. Shaggy. So now they're later. They're walking out of the bar later. And he goes, I really appreciate you guys helping me get off. All right. And she goes, oh, don't worry, Billy Brubaker. I'll make sure you get off just right. D.D. God damn. Like, D.D. D.D. Mulligan is just fucking doing it. Yeah. She uh, runs for those, that town. For those who do, Brittany Murphy is, uh, she's the girl from 8 Mile. I don't think we said that earlier. We talked about all of her characters being kind of the same, and then I went on a tangent about how she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> she's dead, and it's her fault she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's uh, she's the girl who is f- fucking Eminem in 8 Mile, and then she fucks that other dude yeah. in 8 Mile. No, oh, yeah, she's a great actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's also in a movie with Dakota Fanning where she's like her nanny. Yeah. She's not a, not a put-together nanny. That's yeah. for damn sure. Damn. Um, Art imitates life. We're now on a beach. Freddy is being a little bitch with Jessica Biel talking to like, my mom dead and she could hold a conversation with anybody. Like, just, just being a fucking... Yeah. I, I hate his character. Yeah. Same. Just, just wanting pity. Wanting yeah, to pity fuck saying. her. He's like, she's dead and my, my dad... You know, he wants me to fail, you know? Like, tonight, it was just this welcome to failure. She goes, he wants you to fail? He goes, he did. My brother did. When I look at him, I see failure. Why is like, <laughs> just, I just look at him. I, oh, I, just, I just look at him. Stare at him. And I see failure. Crazy. She's like, you have to allow yourself to ex- succeed. Just for big rewards, you got to be willing to risk it. And then they just seemingly fuck on the beach. I don't like. I think that's yeah. they start kissing and then they lay down and then it cuts to Dee Dee Mulligan doing the beer in the legs thing to Shaggy. Good for Shaggy. Yeah, and you he's know? he's naked and gets Gotta up catch and, some clams. and says the the big the big bowl the big boy brew is back ah. and then jumps in the water naked and they're all going wild. So he's staying. Yeah. He's staying. They missed the bus. He's staying. He's having fun. Next morning, Ooh. the shortstop is at Wilmer's house, and oh, he goes in the Wilmer's bedroom and goes, dude, she made the grapes disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, grapes? What grapes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Freddie Prince and his dad have an awkward breakfast where dad says he's a little, a little too focused on... The Shaw, the Shaw Road girl, and not uh, focused enough on baseball. Which is funny that, you know, because isn't he sober now? He's hungover. True. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, he's, he's standing by it. No, yeah, that's what, son, I'm, that's son, what I'm getting to. Son, fact- son gave up fucking five runs, blew the game last night. Yeah, yeah. Get like, you, basically what I'm getting to keep, is... Keep your head in the game. Stay focused. <laughs> he doesn't... Yeah, it wasn't about him just being drunk saying that shit. Like, he, he totally believes in what he's saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Beal wakes up late, comes to the breakfast table, and dad, dad's like, you're up late. And the mom goes, she got home late. I goes, oh, what were you up to? And then the sister goes, she's with Ryan Dunn. It's always the fucking younger it, siblings. She's with Ryan shit up. It's with Ryan Dunn. Super cute southpaw who has a shot if he can harness that temper. <laughs> like, very. <laughs> and dad goes, the kid who cuts the grass? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's so confused. And uh, yeah, the daughter's very observant, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And then the dad's like, I invited your ex-boyfriend to come here and play golf with me and stay with us. And she's like, I told you we were taking a taking a break. And he's like, we like to play golf. Yeah. Oh, we can't play golf together? I can't fly him from another state in to stay with us for a while and it's, play golf? It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Shaggy then wakes up at, uh, at Freddie Prince's house. And starts drinking water out of uh, 
like a little flower vase, and he's spilling it all over yeah, himself. I, bro, I thought at first it was a bong. I was like, how ridiculous is this guy going to be <laughs> right now? But but you notice it's not. But it was it's shaped like it, kind of. But it's a vase. It looks like a vase. Yeah. It fucking shapes like it. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Every vase is kind of shaped like a bong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, drinks out of it, spilling it all over himself, and Ryan goes, Dad, this is Billy Brubaker, our catcher. And he goes, eh. He's reading the paper. And Ryan goes, I see you met Dee Dee Mulligan last night. He goes, yeah, I like Dee Dee. And then the dad looks and goes, nice thong. And then, like, the camera pulls out and we see that he's wearing a thong. And he has a humongous bulge. <laughs> <laughs> it, like... I did not know what you were about but, to say But, right like, there. <laughs> like it, it looks clearly stuffed. But they stuffed it just so ridiculously. Like, it looked like they put soda cans in it. Oh, they stuffed it. I mean, pull it up. It looks like it. It looks like a soda can is in the can... thong, right? Like, 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 pull it up. Pull yeah, it up yeah. and see it. Pull it. Like it. It looks. It's, it's bananas. Yeah. No. And so I got it here. Yeah. This is. <laughs> but it'd Dude, be, it'd be no... one thing if it just looked like he had a big dick and balls and like whatever. Either they stuff it or that <laughs> actor really does. It doesn't look like a penis. It looks like literally they took a coke can. And just shoved it in there. And they're like, this looks good. No, yeah. Because Shaggy could have a totally different profession if, if this is, like, his legitimate junk. This is, yeah, this is too much. They they, they definitely, like, stuff something in there. A, a fucking Coke can. Yeah. It's... Or Sprite. <laughs> it's, like, Pepsi. actually very ridiculous now that I'm looking at it. Um. So now it's it's a rain out. <laughs> they're putting the tarp over the field. And the dad is just so casual about yeah. it. Nice, it was, like, nice clean- thong. I would have been like, bitch... Get some fucking clothes on. I've never fucking met you before. That's because you're, in you're my a house. confrontational pile of shit, bro. No, he's spilling water and a shit funny, all over my fucking wood floors. This, this is whatever. This Fuck is whatever. Him. You would get angry and want to fight him because you're a fucking. You got this big chip on your shoulder and you want to start shit with everybody. You That's get, your thing. You, you goddamn right. Yeah, just let him let him do his thing. Say nice <laughs> thong. Uh, Wilmer won't fuck the house parents. Still, it's a quick thing. And then the outfielder is with just a, a morbidly obese girl that which really quick. that probably weighs like a hundred and forty pounds, like just so fat, ugh, you know? Yeah, she wasn't that big. No, she wasn't that big at all. Yeah, yeah, at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't that big, and kind of good looking girl. Well, it was absolutely ridiculous what ended up fucking happening. Do you, do you have it? I'm sure you have it. I, you're the poem guy. I don't have it. You're the one who insists on it. So he he write, she, <laughs> she's like in the bathroom getting ready, and she's like, read that poem you wrote about me again. And it's just the poem where he's like, oh, how I love her belly full of jelly. Like It's 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 like a poem about how into Oh, I love her he size as I, she... I only wish there was more of me so I could love more Marjorie. Yeah. That's her name. Like it's it's a it's a it's a long poem about liking fat girls. It is absolutely insane. And the girl isn't that isn't fat. fat. She might be a little overweight, like but like it's not Yeah, she's n- overweight, but she's not like literally no one fat, would fat. look at her and be like, Look at that fat girl. Nobody. Nobody would be like, Ah, oh, that girl's so fat. <laughs> like yeah, you wouldn't think she's like that that fat. So we cut to Freddie Prince is dropping Jessica Biel off at her house, and she so says, someone's got a fat problem. She says nothing better than swimming in the rain, and he goes what? And she gets out of the truck, and he gets out with her and follows her, and she strips down to her underwear and a white t shirt. She looks great. She looks great, <sighs> and dives in the water. Freddie strips down to his underwear and jumps in with her. Heavy breath continues. They get close and it looks like they were like they get real close in the water and then Beale goes, You're thinking about kissing me just now. And he goes, No. She says, Well now you are since I said it. He goes, No, I'm thinking that's what you're thinking. And she says, No. I'm thinking I could swim the length and back underwater. And he says, Five bucks says you can't. And then they shake on it, and then they both go underwater and they have a little moment, looks like they're gonna kiss, and then she pushes off of him and starts she's gotta swim the length and back underwater. Yeah. He gets up and uh, he goes over. He's in the corner of the pool, and he notices that the bed parents' bedroom light comes on. Dad comes out on the back porch. Back porch looks awesome. 
protected. It looked, rich. It like like that balcony. It looks completely protected from the rain. Like yeah. I would go if I lived in that house. Every time it was raining, I'd go outside. I would like, go sit on that. Yeah, patio. Like, it would just oh, it'd just be sweet, peaceful. Yeah. Um. He he then dad's like, hey, who's out there? I'll, I need a flashlight. Baby, get me a flashlight. Yeah. And Freddie Prince is like, well, I get the fuck out of here. He goes under. He's like screaming her name under the water. She can't hear him. She's, she's swimming, still swimming. She's the swimming the length and back underwater. Yeah. Uh, which was, it wasn't a big enough pool to where but it would like, take her that long. When they were stripping, didn't he say something about like. He said the N word. I wasn't going <laughs> to. I, I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> But wasn't he, wasn't he like, um, what about your parents or something like that? And she's like, oh, don't worry about oh, it. She, like, don't worry. She, she just had the fight with dad where dad's like, fucking the lawn boy? What's wrong with you? Like, She wanted to get caught. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, we're going to go at night, swim in the rain, in my pool, in our underwear. Like, she's hoping daddy hears her. Yeah. she got daddy issues, you know? Yeah, who doesn't? And, th- and that's why who someone doesn't? like him can succeed with someone like her in this scenario. Absolutely, you know it's all takes, Freddy, it's all Freddie needed. Just take some daddy He's, issues for someone to be able to be in the right position to score a baddie like Jessica Biel. Yeah, baddie. Yeah, guy. That's my uh, that's my fucking fifteen year old co host using words that high school kids use. Yeah, to score an attractive woman such as Jessica Biel. Attractive. Yeah, her and her dad need to be at odds together. Yeah. Marky She's Mark bad. wasn't scoring a girl like like Reese Witherspoon without some daddy issues. Oh, you're right. For damn sure. That's right. It always takes you some but, daddy issues. So, uh, so Freddie Prince just gets the fuck out of there, grabs his clothes, runs out. Which he should. Jessica Biel pops up and goes, you owe me five bucks, and sees that nobody's there. And then dad flashes a flashlight at her. Does, can't see it's her. It's pouring rain. Yeah. And she goes, stay right where you are. And she gets under the water. Uh... Freddie Prince is out front and like pushes on one of the cars to set the alarm off, create a diversion <laughs> so she can get out of there. No, that was totally yeah, accidental. Yeah. No, 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 no. It seemed accidental Pause from it. his reaction. Pause right, it. Watch. Pause it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I still don't think that they guys knew what this, they were even going for. This is Braden being hard headed. No, Freddie no, Prince no. runs up. He leans on a car and then goes, Ugh! And pushes against it. And he sets the alarm go, off. He doesn't go <clears throat> like that. He hard. goes Ugh. no. It's a little less dude, than that. Dude, we, ju- we just fucking played it. Yeah, wasn't that? So it's not over the top. Ra- or there's other like, noise and it's raining. You can't. Yeah. We're in a small room, and I'm going. Ugh. It's ob- It's gonna sound more than what he did with all that background noise. If you you guys go watch it, let us know what you think. But I just I think personally that like, you guys don't, don't even need to watch it. But no, because Braden is it. wrong. Well, think about it. why would he think? Oh, I need to fucking set off their car alarm to distract for the daughter who lives at this house who does not care, as she stated just a little bit ago, that she doesn't care about her father or if he, if they find him. It's fucking love, Braden. He's like, I don't want her to get caught. Yeah, I maybe. care about her. Maybe yeah. Uh, I don't I want don't her know. to get caught. Also, he just seemed like also, also like also how how she explained I'm swimming in my clothes like by yourself. I don't I don't buy it. She likes swimming in the rain. I don't buy it. You're fucking some dude. Who's the dude? <laughs> who's the dude? And then like she talks up, he smacks her. He goes, "Who's the fucking dude?" <laughs> uh, she then so the alarm's going off, and he's like, "Oh, call the fucking police. They're getting the car." She gets out and goes up to the front. He's in his truck. They make out a bunch. Yeah. Uh, talk about how. Dad's gonna kill Make him. Making out in the rain, just fucking can't beat it. So dramatic, can't beat it. And then he, then he leaves. Mm-hmm. Cut to we got a game. Shaggy's at the plate, gets a bunt single. Everything's turning around. Gets, just had a gets fuck a, gets, a, gets a bunt single, takes the ball from the first baseman, throws into the dugout, keep the ball. Yeah, which I'm like, are, so, can you do that? Yeah, it's a it's a big thing. Well, like I know if you're like hitting like a home run or something, but like if you're on the base, the dude still has the ball, like waiting for you to possibly like. So like you can call time to the ump. Okay, okay. But also, but like, uh, y- you never like you never see a player physically grab the ball. But if someone like in the majors, if someone gets their first base hit, the the fucking first baseman, like if he has the ball, he'll throw it into the dugout. Oh, I didn't know. He's, he's okay. gonna want to keep it. Like they'll they'll keep the ball. First major league hit, big like Miguel Cabrera hit his one hundredth double. I can remember off the top of my head, and he's like, "I want the ball." 
It's like, throw that, f- throw that fucking ball in the dugout right now. I want that ball. <laughs> and they're like, all right, there okay. you go. Yeah. Um, so he gets the ball, and now he's on a tear. They keep showing him hitting. His average is all the way up to 268, which is... They were going over a couple games, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't just that game. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, th- throughout the court. They're just showing the average is rising. Mm-hmm. He's up to 268, which for a catcher, not ideal. You don't want you want to be a little bit higher than that. But if a catcher hits like 280, you're like, oh, that's, that's a good catcher. If yeah. he's if he's good defensively and good at calling a game, yeah. you're like, this is that's cherry on top. Yeah. If he can get on base every now and then. Mm-hmm. They talk about Freddie Prince being Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, he's, he's giving up hits and looking mad. He's shaking off the catcher a whole bunch. This is a quick, like, they're going over the course for a bunch of games here and just yeah. a quick little montage. Uh, and then it's showing Jessica Beale shows up at the game and he just starts mowing people down. And then he's playing catch with Jessica Beale in the backyard. Now it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a montage kind of thing. We're going to need a montage. Montage. A sports training montage. Yeah. Montage. <laughs> of like shit starting to go better for them. Yeah. Yeah. It still shows him struggling on the a mound A little bit, times, yeah. But, but it starts to show over that how it's getting better with his relationship with Jessica Beale. Absolutely. Yeah. And she, they show they're thrown in the backyard and she's doing exactly like, like a picture in picture, exactly what he does on the mound, like kicking the dirt. Yeah. Spitting, shaking them off. So attractive. And then she throws it, and then she goes, <laughs> Steve Wright 3, you are out of here! Whoa. And he goes, oh my god! They they hug, and they start making out Well, she yard. jumps on him, and when I was watching it, they, like, fall back, and I was like, oh, he, he almost looked like he fucking <laughs> tore his fucking ACL or something. Great like, if yeah. he got hurt. <laughs> Dude, like, honestly, it looked, it looked like he fell back awkwardly. And I was like, oh, ho- hopefully he doesn't hurt his knees, you know. Can you imagine? There, uh, I could imagine. Oh, <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> my girl tackled me and I fucking <laughs> tore my ACL. They're now, they're in the clubhouse after a win and the coach tells Freddie Prince, he's like, you're going to be starting against Hyannis. And Van Lemer's like, oh, good luck. He talks about how good the lineup is. He's like, they got two guys who were drafted. But a million dollar golden ponies, whatever, whatever the fuck he says. And he's like, I, I yeah. would just, you know, I would, I, would, I would think about it before you invite any friends or family to the game. Yeah. Because everyone in that lineup can take you yard. Just shitting on his teammate. Real good, real good guy. Yeah. We're now at the tavern again. Freddie's telling the strip club manager that he's starting against Hyannis and how good the lineup is. And he's like taking the trash out as he says. It. And he goes, oh, cool. What inning should I show up? Should probably get there early, right? And then walks out with the trash. And Freddie Prince follows him. He's like, hey, what the fuck's that supposed to mean? And he goes, I'm just trying to figure out what inning you'll self-destruct. Yeah, I want to be there for that. And he goes, man, why aren't you behind me? He goes, I am behind you. Everyone's behind you but yourself. And he goes, look, just because you didn't have what it takes. He goes, no, I didn't have what it takes. I never had what it takes. But you do. You got a bag full of talent and a head full of crap. What you think since <laughs> what you think since mom died the world owes you something bullshit, dude? And it's like what? Oh, oh, this- oh, you've been given this gift and you're just <laughs> pissing it away. It's like, dude, this I'm I'm so confused and conflicted. Is this a comedy or a drama? Because there's so many times where I'm like, oh, this is a drama. It's a for it's, sure. it's a romantic dramedy. Yeah, it yeah, it's got, it's got some funny parts. Got some drama, got some romance. It's got it's got some baseball. It's yeah. got everything. It's got a bunch of goofs. It's also guys, uh, hold tight. There's a humongous cameo <laughs> that I forgot was in this movie, and I started hysterically laughing when he came <laughs> on the screen. We'll get there. We'll yeah. get there. But just hang tight. You're gonna yeah, love yeah. it. Now Freddie shows up at Jessica Beale's house and knocks on the door, which which is bananas. Yeah, she answered it, and she's all like. Oh, this is the one day I told you to like chill, like to like where we can't hang out, we can't be together. And he's like, "I, I know, I just, I just need to see you. My, my brother and I got in a fight, and I <laughs> just like, and I, I just, and then this dude walks up and puts his arm around Jessica Beale, and he's like, ah. And then the dad walks up and he goes, "Oh, the gardener's son, what are you doing here so late?" And he starts being like, "Oh, my dad wanted me to to check the," and he goes, "Well, come on in, have a beer." I believe you know my daughter. 
this is the dad trying to basically say, hey, listen, <laughs> look, you are not in the picture. Yeah, that is so happy that he showed up. Yeah. He's like, oh, perfect. Yeah. What a better way to send the message. Uh, Beale does not look happy about this. Little sister is sitting on the stairs, and she's like, oh, this ain't good. Yeah. This, this ain't going to be too good. Yep. So they go in, and the dude is playing pool with the dad, and he's like, oh, so you were just about to tell us why you stopped by. And he goes, oh, I, uh, my dad was worried. He wanted me to check the hydrangas. Uh you know, he's make sure they're blooming. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, so you do work for Rand. Which well, dad's name is Rand. Yeah. Rand Parrish. Give him a more... I guess a weird name. Give sounds, him a, sounds rich and white. Not really. It sounds like his name is Randy. And they're going short for Randy. But this is like... This is a couple of generations ago, though. But like, Walter. Yeah. Walter Parrish. I could fuck with Walter Parrish. I could see that. Rand... That sounds like his nickname. Sounds like his name's Randy. It should be his middle name. Rand. It should be Walter Rand. Walter Randall Parrish. Yeah. Is what it should be. That would be nice. Not Rand. Yeah. Or Randall. It could just be Randall. Yeah. Don't call him Rand. You used to fuck his daughter and you're calling him Rand? <laughs> Who the fuck does this guy think he is? So he's like, but you do work for Rand. And the mom's smoking cigarettes and she says, Ryan and his father do... Exquisite landscaping. <laughs> and then he goes, Freddie Prince goes, I cut the grass. Now, I would not be surprised. <laughs> like, no, he, he's like, he, he's nervous, doesn't know what to say. He just goes, I, I cut the grass. <laughs> he's I, like, I, I, I gotta go. And dad's I'm like, starting, oh, well, thanks for coming by. <laughs> I'm starting to think the dad is fucking the wife. What the debt uh, um, of the fucking law maintenance company? <laughs> I thought you meant. Sorry, but Jessica Fred, Biel, I thought you meant Jessica Beale's dad is fucking Jessica Beale's mom. I was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> That's how they made those two kids. They got. But the fact that she was like the the way she drawed out exquisite landscaping. Uh, I mean, she's not. Probably, probably not, not. But absolutely not. Could That's be. that is the only hint they're going to give us. Dad's going to be fucking. That guy's wife, and that's the only hint all movie they're going to give us. Maybe she's her, like very good. Is her talking about how good their landscaping is? Well, because you know. You think that's part of this fucking movie, Brayden? Well, because Jessica Biel's father is probably super smart, and she knows that she's going to keep it under wraps, and it's the only way. It's the only thing she can comment on it. No, but the movie should have showed us, obviously, if she if they're fucking. So, yeah, they're probably not. They're not. Yeah. Definitely not. The guy's wife just died. You gotta make me feel so shitty, David. All right, I get it. Stupid, <laughs> stupid man, Braden. Uh, Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince walks out, and he's like, "Stupid bitch, it's fucking bull, it's bullshit." I'm about to pitch the biggest game of my life. What the fuck was I thinking? And she, she Beals behind him, and she's like, "I know you're gonna pitch the biggest game of your life, and you're gonna do great. You're gonna do great, David." His name's Chris, and we decided to stop seeing each other. But my dad invited him to play golf without asking me. And Freddie Prince like, yeah. Because if he would have asked, you would have been like, oh, Ryan would love to go play croquet or tennis. Or maybe have martinis at the yacht club. And she goes, I, I haven't really told my parents about you. He goes, you didn't tell me about Chris. And she's like, God, like everyone's pressuring me. My dad pressured me to San Francisco, Chris and all this stuff. So like, I just want to do nothing this summer. And he looks real sad. And he goes, yeah. And I'm the nothing you picked. <gasps> and he gets in his truck and goes, look, let's just go back to I'm the guy who cuts your grass. And that's it. Things were a lot simpler that way. And she's like, that's not fair. And then he drives off. Yeah. Play the victim. Go he and shame such her. a little bitch. Yeah. Play that petty <laughs> fucking card. So now he's, he's it's time for him to pitch the biggest game of his life. It's game day. And what and, does he do? And that fat girl is uh, is there. That morbidly obese chick is there. She just... says hi to the outfielder. And, and I'm this jealous. is I'm like what this is when Shaggy goes, Man, that is unhealthy. <laughs> I'm worried. One of these girls are gonna roll over on you, squash you dead. Bro, and she does not look fat at all. Like she no. just like you 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 can make the argument that maybe she looks a little overweight. Yeah. She's she's a bigger girl, but she's also tall. Yeah, like, she's she's just she's just a big person. Yeah. She is not 
you're not like, oh, that's fat. What do you? Oh, that's so what are you unhealthy. Doing fucking that fat girl. She's not like a thousand pounds no, or some it, shit. It is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Dunn's Dunn's warming up in the bullpen. The coach walks up to him. He talks about his time at FSU and how he had a cup of coffee with the twins. He goes, well, half a cup of coffee. And then he tells him, he's like, you, you got it inside of you. One day it's all going to click. And that's the moment. Once it all comes together and clicks, you never lose it. You feel unstoppable. You feel fucking unstoppable. Augie and Pete are talking about, oh, talking about the Olympics and how go-karts and breath holding are never going to be Olympic games. And Ryan like walks past him. Oh, you're going to do great, Ryan. You're wicked awesome. You're <laughs> wicked awesome, kid. Go get him. And then Pete goes, hey, what if I cut off my left arm? Will they let me compete in the Special Olympics? I'd love to win a medal. <laughs> and then Augie goes, you know, Pete, I want you to go sit over there by the trash cans. I want you to think about what you just said. That's messed up. Well, once again, man, this has got to be the same writer ma- choosing these things. Like, it's it's got to be that one writer. The same I, writer hope that, I hope that was all improv. I hope yeah. no one oh, wrote it. Augie yeah. and Pete, they're just like, guys, go say whatever you want. I'm yeah. Like, Done. 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 We got this. We've been waiting for a moment. So now the mascot is a fish girl. And she's dancing in front of the the bleachers. She's not a clam. And this guy is smoking a cigar. And he goes, hey, fish girl, get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. And he goes, beat it, Red. <laughs> this, this is an adult. She is, guys, she is 10 years old. Okay, let's also, let's, let's also put in perspective, too. He's, in, he's like on the sixth row of these bleachers. Sure, smoking a cigar. And, and like he's high up. This girl is like three feet tall at most. There's no way she is in any what blocking his view of the no, game. No, like he's, in any he's just way. annoyed. He doesn't like the fish mask guys. Like, get out of here. Get, get, the, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, he was like Italian or something. No. Braden's doing an Italian voice. He I did thought, not sound Italian. See, he looked Italian. He, he sounded like a fucking Bostonian. Maybe it was Boston. Fish girl, yeah, get out of here. Yeah. There's no Italian voice. It's all, it's either Wilmer or people doing poor Boston accents. I said he looked Italian. He didn't sound Italian. Then you did an Italian voice. What, uh, listen, all right. He looked at what does that even mean? He looked Italian. Okay, okay. So slick, I give it. slick back hair yeah, and a gold chain. Hair. Yeah, yeah. Slick back hair, gold chain, very tan, wh- nice white preppy clothing, smoking a cigar, gold jewelry. The fuck are we talking about here, David? <laughs> 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 like he's straight out the Sopranos. So they are they're scoreless through three innings. Freddie Prince is doing well. The stepdad from Identity is watching him, and another scout, he asks him what he thinks about Freddie Prince, and the other scout's not impressed, and he leaves, and this guy's like, I don't know. That guy was out there's, from the beginning of the game. He's like, I don't know. There's something there. Yeah. Something there. Uh, sick double play gets him out of the fourth inning. Did we say he's from the show? Because we no, talked no, about no, it no, before. No, no, no. He's, before. Shut the fuck up. He is only the stepdad in Identity. If you guys don't know who that is, the Five Six Kings have an episode on Identity. We say what else that guy was in. In that episode. But going on, he is only the stepdad in Identity. Okay, okay. Yeah, if we say someone, if we do a movie where someone's in that movie, and they aren't like... like, We can only reference them from then before. McConaughey, like like a big time actor. It's it's Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. This guy is the stepdad in Identity. Yep. And you know, maybe if he's in another movie, he's the scout from Summer Catch. Could be. Or the doctor. Could be. No. (laughs) <laughs> why would you go backwards? Why the fuck? Why the fuck would you go backwards? Uh, sick double play gets him out of the inning, and Van Lemer goes, "Luck don't last forever, lawn boy." Van Lemer's a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Princh walks the bases loaded in the sixth. I will say, doesn't though, think he's got highlights in his hair, which was a good choice because that's what baseball players do. He he looks unlikable. Like he yeah. he, he looks yeah. Yeah. They, they made him look like a like an evil pitcher. Yeah. They crushed it. Yeah. Uh, walks the bases loaded in the sixth and doesn't think it was ball four and tells the ump to get off his knees because he's blowing the game. And the ump goes, you say something, son. And Shaggy goes, no, sir, he didn't. Throws the ball. He then hits the next batter. And yeah, it, like it in brings, the back. Yeah. It brings in a run. And, and then he, like, squats down, and it's, like, almost having, like, a breakdown. Squats down. He's like, so, coach called time. 
And they go they go meet at the mound. Fuck. Coach learns after their last time. Sure didn't. Coach called time and just goes and meets with him. Yeah, no, I know. And Shaggy <laughs> tries to diffuse it, and he's like, it's it's my fault. So I've been blowing farts in his face all night. I don't think he appreciates that. Just trying to get it done smiling and laughing. Yeah. This is a dumb joke. Just get him out of his own head. And you know, that's 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 Shaggy for you. Yeah. Oh, Acting wh- goofy. When everyone got to the mound, Freddie Prince said, does his wife know he's screwing us? Oh. Just really, just really yeah. just classic stuff. <laughs> Uh, he then throws a wild pitch, and two runs score on the wild pitch. Yeah, so nothing really helped. That's That's got to be on Shaggy. Yeah. Two runs. Can't, you need to get to the ball quicker. Oh, for sure. Two runs can't score on a wild pitch. Yeah. Because it was behind him. It's not, like, it bounced, it's not like it bounced and went down the third baseline. It bounced right back towards him. Yeah. Like, he's got to go get that, but he doesn't. They lose eight to nothing. After the game, Freddie Prince signed some autographs, and the step... His dad brings the stepdad up to him, and the stepdad says, "That was really good stuff, kid. You just got to focus." For everyone listening, he's the stepdad. I've been calling him the stepdad all, all just movie. Just making sure, just in all case. movie. Yeah, yeah. You think other people aren't listening? Like, Who's the stepdad? He's the we scouter. just talked about how just, he's the stepdad. Just making sure, and he's the scout. Fuck out of my face. <laughs> um, and he's like, "It's good stuff, kid. You know, you just gotta gotta keep it together, stay focused." And then he leaves, and Ryan's dad is like, "He." Wants to see you pitch again. They're interested in you. He's like, I'm in the bullpen the rest of the year. Next, next to Calvin Knight, the best closer in the league. Basically, like, I'm, I'm probably not going to get a chance to pitch again. Yeah. His dad kind of comforts him, and he's like, and that I'll pat it out for you, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, thanks, Dad. Now he's out in the outfield with Augie and Pete, and he's they're drinking beers, and he's like, I'm probably not even going to show up to the next couple of games. I'm just done. I'm finished. I'm, I'm washed up. I'm a it, piece of shit. And Augie's like, what are you talking about, man? Or no, no, no. Pete says, Pete says, I think you're a great pitcher, Ryan. And he goes, well, yeah, you mean don't mean shit. He goes, all that matters is making it and cashing a check. It's like, oh, I'll cash a check for about 70 bucks for cutting grass at Chatham Elementary. And then Augie's, Augie gets real angry and he's like, we went to Boston College in Framingham State to watch you pitch. I sat with you at your mom's wake. We picked you up behind the oasis when you couldn't clean yourself up, Ryan. Some of us are proud as... Oh, oh no, fuck, fuck, what did he say? No, 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 no. You couldn't get yourself up. He's like, I'm proud as hell you done what you done. Some of us think you already made it just by being here. And it's... Oh, because earlier he said maybe some podunk... I'm lucky if some podunk team has me come pitch batting practice for a couple seasons. He's like, I'm proud as hell you done what you done. And if Podog calls, you bet your ass you're going to go there. And I'll be right there with you. And Pete's coming too. <laughs> and then just it's like screaming at him. That's a lot of best friend commitment right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't fucking follow Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Hey, Brayden, state. If, Brayden, if you're going to go pitch batting practice for some team wherever, and like that's your pitching batting practice, I'm not coming with you. Really? Yeah. And Podunk sounds like a shit. It doesn't sound like a good area. But like, we'll be together. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. It's yeah. like, what are these guys? What you you were in L.A. and I didn't go with you. L.A. sounds like an awesome place to go live. <laughs> if you go to Podunk, do you think I'm coming? I don't know, maybe. But then, uh, like, so he, he comes around. <laughs> and he's like, I love you guys. Like, you're my best friends. And then Augie goes to Podunk. And they cheers. And they start making up. <laughs> yeah. And he starts blowing Augie. He's like, thanks so much for coming to those games at Framingham State. <laughs> He's such a good friend. Next morning, Beal, uh, Jessica Beal is mowing Freddie Prince Jr.'s lawn. Which, like, dude, what a better way to say sorry. Yeah. You know? That, the dad's watching. He's like, I'm starting to like this girl. Ah. Uh, yeah. Shag, like, Shaggy's, Shaggy's like, like, dude, look at her. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing inside? He's like, get out there. <laughs> you got to let her? You just got to sit in here and watch her cut your fucking grass? Look at her. Um, I don't know why I'm giving Shaggy a fucking pop. Yeah, so I, I wasn't gonna call you on that one. I was gonna keep moving. I heard it, but I was like, you know what? We'll, we'll let it. We'll let it slide. There's uh, enough Boston accent yeah, that I'm saying, like, throws him off. It's, yeah. it's fine. He's entitled to it. 
Uh, but he goes out and she's running the mower and she's trying to say, she's going, my parents are having a party tonight and he can't hear her because the mower's going. He goes, what? And she goes, I said, my parents are having a, and then he like pulls her hand off the little bar thing that you got to hold down to get the, it was a push mower. They have a riding mower and she's like, I'm going to go push mower. Yeah. And like pulls her hand off the little bar thing that keeps it going. And he goes, my parents are having a party tonight and you should come. And she's like, I told my parents about you and I told Chris and Chris left my dad insisted you come to the party tonight. And he goes, I got creamed by Hyannis last night. <laughs> Just immediately, like, like I, jumping into the baseball game. And she's like, yeah, I, got I creamed. Heard. I heard. My sister told me you and the umpire were arguing a lot. <laughs> Wait, and, oh, because the sister, yeah, she's the, um, she's the, the mascot. She's fish girl. She's fish girl. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I did everything wrong. Like, then everyone's trying to push me in the different directions. You're the only one who cares what I want. She's like, I'm sorry. Then they go to kiss and Shaggy knocks on the window and points at his dad there. And he's like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And then they talk some more and say some sexy stuff. And then they do kiss. And he tells her, he says, don't forget the trim. And she says, yeah, and I should uh, I should get the flower bed and the bird feeder too, right? A yeah. little joke. like yeah. You're going to tell me how to cut grass, bro. I watch you destroy our flowers David, and our bird a, feeder. David, it's a bird pole. Uh, the bird pole. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The bird the bird pole. Come on. Everyone's got a bird pole. Come on. <laughs> Everyone knows that. So now they're at the party. Looks like a very nice party. He's wearing a button down shirt. And immediately he goes, You know, if this is uh if this is too boring, I'm not saying it will be, but uh the team's having a little get together. You could always leave and go to that. Just immediately, right off the rip. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. You know, and like thus far I'm like, what have they done enough together? I don't know to be so comfortable or like to be so in love and I mean it's love bro yeah true yeah love baby yeah she looked love. into those big eyes and she was it's just beautiful like beautiful eyes you just have such beautiful eyes uh, they swam in the, actually they swam a... in the rain they fucked on the beach they went and got ice cream yeah they were playing catch together in the backyard no, yeah, I guess you're yeah, right. they're, they're, they're fucking in love yeah um, a lady walks up to them and Freddie Prince just like, hey, I'm going to the bar. Doesn't even say hi. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go to the bar. And he goes to the bar and bumps into Jessica Biel's little sister, asks how the mascot game is going. And she says she's quitting. Nobody gets it. And he goes, oh, I don't quit. Yeah. You just got to figure out what the heart of Chatham is. You know, go with your, or what the true spirit of Chatham is. You'll, you'll find it. And boy, does she later. Yeah. Parents walk up and... Shows up as crab people. Crab people. Crab... You know what I'm talking about, David. I mean, I'm familiar with crab people from South Park. Yeah. yeah. Why does... This... <laughs> I got to like... How'd you make that connection? I was making a joke that that's what she showed up as next. It was crab people. You said she also has crab people. No. No, I said... Because we were talking about like what she shows. Because we're talking about what she's going to be. And I said she shows up next as crap people. Okay, she's a crap person. She's got the crap people outfit, and she's saying the crap people. So it's not what happened. Yeah, David, you got to save me sometimes, bro. I, it's tough. You make it. You make it tough and tough. And then the times I decide to save you, you're like. Oh, I'm an idiot. Why'd I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I try sometimes and you don't let me. There, I don't I don't know what the fuck to do there. Come on, bro. It's crap people. I just feel like, yeah, crap people, whatever, and then go on with the movie. Like Yeah. You no, know, people listen will be like, oh David was pretty dismissive of Braden with that. Yeah, guys. I love crap I people. Gave, I gave you I gave you room there. You could have turned it around and made something out of it. You took, I just you felt took like, chicken shit, and instead of making chicken salad, you made more chicken shit. Sometimes people like chicken shit, you know? Some people do. So uh, the parents walk <laughs> up. See, see what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The parents walk up <laughs> and say hello, and then the dad's like, yeah, yeah, why don't you walk with me, Ryan? And the dad's like, look, we both know this little, this little phase of hers is going to grow out by Labor Day. So I want you to end things with her. Or me and all of my friends are going to fire your dad as our landscaper. <laughs> Fucking 
crazy. Dude, I'm going to be like, bro, go ahead. I'm going to keep Fre- plowing your Fre- fucking daughter. Freddie Prince, uh, he says, you know what? You can take this lawn job and you can shove it. And then he storms out of there and really hard shoulder checks a guy who's like talking to Jessica Biel like they're in a circle talking. He shoulder checks the shit out of him. The guy doesn't react. Jessica Biel sees it and she's like, whoa. This guy did nothing. (laughs) She's like, like, I'll be right back. So to try and make it apparent to his girlfriend that like he's upset by something. He's leaving. He's going to shoulder check a dude he's never fucking met. Does it hard that she follows him out and she's like, what the fuck's going on? And he just says, maybe tomorrow night at the field after the game. And then starts his truck and leaves. That was enough. Yeah. No, like, no, what What the fuck is, why are you leaving? Yeah, I would have been like, yeah, and the way she reacted, I would have been, been like, the same way. This is a big deal to me. Yeah. And you're being an asshole right now. Yeah. hundred percent. But you think he would also be like. Dude, your fucking dad just told me to stop dating you or he's going to fucking fire my father. But so is the next thing he's telling his dad about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we cut in at the end. He's like, ah, oh, those people. Blah, the dad's like, ah, hey, father being fucking crazy, whatever, whatever the fuck. No, yeah, yeah. Said. He ends up. Yeah. And, he, and then Freddie Prince goes, yeah, you're probably right about her anyways. So like, in his mind, he's like, I don't want to. No, yeah. I don't want yeah. my dad to lose his livelihood over this girl whose family is so against us being together. Um, and dad's like, nah, you find the right girl, start a family. That's what's most important. And Oh, it's pouring rain, by the way. Yeah. And then dad goes, you know, your mother used to say the only reason the Indian rain dance would work because they wouldn't stop dancing until it rained. <laughs> Every time it rained, she'd say that. And, you know, she probably wasn't wrong. And then he goes... Stay at it. You're a good kid, good ball player. Baseball might be a career for you. And then that scene ends. He just walks out. It's post game. The Chatham A's one five to two. Van Lemer and the shortstop are, are with two chicks. They're drinking in the parking lot. And Freddie Prince is sitting with Jessica Beale and seemingly because like, like we come in mid conversation a lot with these yeah. two, mm-hmm. and it's we like come in mid conversation. He's like, "So what if I get a trial? You're just gonna fucking follow me all over the country?" Like he's just like, "What are you? This is dumb. What are you? What are you? What are you trying to prove here?" I just feel like a lot of their interactions is like that conflict, contemplative discussion of like the future. Yeah, you know, and it's Th- this, just, especially this one. Yeah, this one gets fucking uncomfortable. Yeah, Van Lemer and crew. Uh, they break into the press box. Van Lemer, they, they can't see, so he lights a match and then lights the full book of matches. But it burns his fingers, so he drops it. Doesn't see where it falls. It falls into a crate of newspapers. Dude, they're in which, like... Worst case scenario. Everything is wood. Yeah, it's, it's a wood everything building. Everything is wood and there's paper. You would be he suspicious. D- he drops it and assumes it's fine. They just keep going. It's just so dumb. <laughs> but um, it would happen. It could happen. Freddie. We then cut back to Freddie Prince talking to Jessica Biel, and he's like, "She's like, my dad's not going to pay for architectural school and grad school." He's like, "So what? You can get loans." <laughs> like, just fucking be crazy. <laughs> and she's like, "No, you don't understand." Be- he goes, I "Don't understand what being broke? I understand. Doing something you love, I understand. I love standing on that mound." With a baseball in my hand, staring at a guy 60 feet away, knowing he can't touch me. It's the only place I feel powerful. Immediately, my mind went to, wow, Jessica Biel should feel disrespected. She sh- <laughs> but he he turns it so she should have. But he turns it around immediately because yeah. he says that and then goes, whatever, though, I'll probably just end up cutting grass. So then it's like, fucking, come on, sad boy. Yeah. Like, like immediately that's, he's so manipulative. Cause like that's, she's like, what are you, why are you so afraid of everything? You don't feel powerful you're afraid, when you're fucking just, you're, af- you're afraid of, you're afraid of that. That's where you're going with that. Well, yeah. What? Like, Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jessica for- Beale holds him down and is on top. <laughs> she's riding that. That's, she is the dominant in that scenario. Just shut up. Slaps. Yeah. Him. He's like, can we take a break? She's like, no. Shh. <laughs> Fucking yeah, starts fucking choking him. <laughs> um, she's like, "You're afraid of failure, of success." He's like, "I'm afraid 
I'm afraid. I'm not the one settle. Or the, you're settling. <laughs> he goes, you're settling for a life that your daddy wants for you, and I'm afraid. And she's crying at this point. She's like, "What do you want me to do?" He so, goes, so, "He goes, go to San Francisco. This is never going to work." And once again, dude, the, the the acting from Jessica Peel is top tier, top fucking notch. It's almost too good for the movie. It's almost like it. It almost takes you out of it because it's like she's so good. I'm like, it almost seems like it's. Like out of the flow of the movie in, in a in a weird way, like yeah, it, it helps you and it brings you in at the same time. But in in a in a contrast way, it's like wow, she's so good. This, it almost seems like yeah, I, I get what you're saying. If that makes sense, not like over the top, but yeah, no, but she's not like fucking Daniel Day Lewis or anything. But no, like, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like she's just for the feel of the movie, it just feels like like she's just for the she's she's perfect for this part. Yeah, yeah. At time at times she also fucking sucks though. I don't. Like what time? Very so hit or is, there, is there a time that well, it's sticks also, out to you? It's, it's lines at the so end. Of, at lines. the end of the movie, the lines are ridiculous. But yeah, and, and that's not her fault though. No, yeah, I feel yeah. You. Um, but yeah, she killed that scene. He looks over. There's a fire. The press box on fire. He runs over. The shortstop and his chick are getting out. And he goes, Van Lemer and Lauren are still upstairs. He's like, All right, I got him. Get out of here. Hops up there. He has keys. He has keys to the top door of the press box. Yeah, why does he have keys? I don't understand. Why I would he have them on him? He cuts the grass there. So I can see him having keys to some stuff, but why like why, the top? why would he ever need to go into the... Because it's a... He's inside the press box. Mm. It's the door where the guy... Let's maybe, for the sake of what we're talking about, maybe the light controls and like the power is up there, like the switch or something. So maybe he needs to turn he's on the light. Cutting grass at night? I don't, that's what I'm saying, maybe. Maybe he helps do the lines, too. Where I he resent needs- that. I resent <laughs> what you're saying for the sake of giving him the benefit. You always want to give him the benefit of the doubt for things. But that's what I'm saying. I'm like, why the, the fucking lawn boy doesn't have keys to the top floor of the press box. Okay. Lawn boy ain't got shit. <laughs> yeah. There's a shit. There's a shit off on the other side. No, yeah, you're right. That's where all the lawn shit is. That's what he has <laughs> keys to. He does not have that key. Yeah. But he does, and he gets them out and saves the day. The next morning... Uh, Freddie Prince and Jessica Biel are on the front page of the newspaper. Jessica Biel's dad is pissed. He's like, congratulations. Your humiliation in this family is complete. Which I did not. I hope you're real happy. I didn't see in the newspaper. What, did it say anything about about him saving the kids or anything? Not, or, not, not what he kids, read. But the guys. Not, not what he read. Okay, it, okay. I'm sure. It might have said that or something. I don't, I don't subscribe to the Chatham newspaper. Chatham, well, yeah, I just Chatham didn't know Times. if it said in bold, like on the top it, or something. It said like fire at the press box or whatever and showed okay, Freddie okay. Prince and Jessica Biel. Um, and yeah, he's super mad because he's like, "This is a this is gonna embarrass our family name." And and then he goes, "This fucking kid, he's gonna end up here cutting grass with his old man, guaranteed." She goes, "Who the hell are you to judge what he does with his life?" Exactly. Ryan is gonna do everything he can to make it in baseball. And he goes, "Fine, then go with him. <laughs> go with him." And then she starts crying and says, "He doesn't want me to go with him." Go to San Francisco. You win, Dad. Are you happy? <laughs> good. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. Just so good. Like, totally brought it. Just knocked it out the ballpark. See that? See what I did there? Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> all the players are in the dugout. The coaches addressing the team. He kicked Van Lemer and uh, the starting shortstop off. So I sent them on a sticky bus, ho- a bus back to Mommy this yeah. morning. Uh, he's yelling at him. He's talking about the next game. It's a big game. And then he goes, done. You got the freshest arm. You're starting tomorrow. Uh-oh. Uh, here we go, baby. Oh, shit. Uh, and then we cut to Freddie Prince's dad pulling up to the parish's home. Oh, yeah. And he goes, hey, I thought I told you not to park in the main driveway. He says, it's fine. It's going to be quick. I'm just giving you your final bill. And he goes, final bill? What are you talking about? We got... Leaves in the fall and <laughs> the pipes freezing up in the winter. <laughs> and he goes, he says, whatever company, they do good work. I'll put you in touch. And he goes, what are you, what are you doing? And then he turns around and goes, you know, my, or he goes, my boy told you what, what you said. He's like, listen, whatever his dad's name is. And he goes, and he cuts him off. He goes, you know, pride isn't exclusive to those of you living on Shaw Road, Mr. Yeah. Parrish. Good day. Yeah. Damn right. He gets in his truck and leaves. Yeah, he's got some fucking pride. Wilmer goes into the room with uh, the house mom. Big day. We had never seen her before. She is the mom 
in American History X. And she's a baddie. She's she's fucking. Have you seen American History X? Yeah. Yeah. She's what's his name's mom? Yeah. Edward Norton. Yeah. Out of left field, that one. Yeah. See what I did, huh? See what I did? <laughs> <laughs> we got him coming. Yeah. Um, and she's sitting in the bed. She's talking about baseball. There's legends. She has a bunch of weird, sexy shit. And then she shoves a cucumber up her pussy. In full detail. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, she's like, ah, yeah. Ah, she's like, Wilmer, push, push a little bit. Push yeah, a little they, bit. Yeah, they really... She gets out of character well and starts it. calling him Wilmer, not yeah. the character's name. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. So, like, <laughs> guys, so, like, they don't show it, but that she says, hand me the cucumber. And then the next scene, Wilmer's at the bar. And, and he's, he's chugging like, a beer. And he's like, the cucumber was completely gone. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's, so, like, cheering him so on. Like, that's, oh, that's what she did. And then Shaggy goes, he goes, oh, it, this, what do, what do you say? He reminds me, because earlier I was at the house and she made me a cucumber sandwich and everyone starts dying Yeah, laughing. he goes, I was, I was there for lunch today. She made me a cucumber salad. A salad, yeah. <laughs> and everyone starts laughing. Yeah. Freddie Prince uh, tells his brother that he's starting. But they're outside. They're like out back. He tells his brother, or the not his brother. I mean, yes, his brother, but the the strip club manager yeah. from Dexter mm-hmm. for the Costco Brotherhood. And he tells him that he's starting tomorrow, and that he's scared. And his brother's like, "I'm scared. Just, just, just pitch your game. Just pitch your game." And he goes, "What's my game?" He goes, "You really ask me right now? You really asking me this?" And then he said, "Sounds like all right." He goes, "Place your fastball, or it is uh, don't try to blow him away with your fastball. Pick your spots. Yeah, be accurate. Don't throw it hard. He's like, but I want to be intimidating." And he goes, everyone in the minors can throw over ninety. When's the last time you saw Maddox throw over ninety one? Greg Maddox, good point. Greg Maddox, great pitcher. Made a career he's throwing like mid eighties. Yeah, just picking his fucking spots, getting them. No one could touch him. Yeah, that's what made Greg Maddox. Greg fucking Maddox. And he just goes, place your fastball, throw your curve. You're dangerous, Rye. You're as good as every guy out there. And he talks about like bringing Ma to see him at Boston College. And he's like, yeah, she never missed a game back then. He goes, she still hasn't missed a game, right? She'd be like, she's up in heaven watching you. Yeah, and it's like he's obviously just thrown uh, fastballs way too much and needs to change it up. Well, so it constantly shows him shaking off. Just to throw the fastball. The the whole movie, and we didn't really touch on this a lot, he shakes off his catcher, Billy Brubaker, Shaggy. Shakes him off until he gives him fastball and then tries to throw fastballs past people. Yeah, all day long. That's what. And, that, and that's typically when he unravels. Late in the game, they're used to the speed of your fastball. Like you're not. Catching and then you're him trying to overly throw fast, which is why he's throwing like. That's why he's messing up his 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 yeah, throws. That's why it's it's fucking gonna throw his arm out. He's hard headed like mom. Yeah. Is what they is what his brother said in the oh, scene. Oh yeah, actually, say, yeah, yeah. You're hard headed. You're just like mom. Uh, we then cut to guys at a table, and one guy says a great joke. He said, Brayden, what one fat chick say to the other fat chick? Oh, I don't know, David. Who cares? They're fat. <laughs> that's what he said. Like, they're making fun of the guy, and that's the joke one of the guys says. Dude. And then the outfielder stands up on his chair, gets the attention of the full bar, says he has an announcement. I like fat women, and they like me. This is anybody so got a problem with that? And the whole bar is like, nah, yeah, everyone's cheering. Okay, so there's two writers. There's Kevin Falls and John Gattins. One of these. I mean, John dude, Gattins wrote that shit. Yeah, the bro. fat chick. <laughs> Who cares? They're fat, dude. He is. They're both very successful. Like help write and act in so many fucking movies and produce and shit. I'm just like surprised. I, I want to know which one of these two fucks is just fat shaming so hard. I hope one of them had a joke, and he said, hey, what did the fat girl say to the other? And then the it, this was not the punchline, but that guy just said, who cares? They're fat. <laughs> They're like, ah, He's yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah That's that, better. That, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Jessica Biel is out front. Freddie Prince is it's like heading to his truck. She's like, hey. And she says that she's leaving tomorrow night, and she's really going to miss him, and that he needs to allow himself to be great. And they, they hug each other. And that's that's their goodbye. Their goodbye forever. Now yeah. it's game day, baby. Ah, it's fucking it's game day. It's game day, and the little sister 
nailed the mascot. Mm. She looked like fucking. She's in like a fisherman's outfit, and she has a peg leg, and she's <laughs> like, "I like to drink." And the crowd's like, yeah! She's like, I like to fight! And the crowd's like, yeah! And she's like, I like falling down in puddles of my own vomit! And they're like, yeah! That's the spirit of Chatham. Yep. I hope neither of these guys are from the Northeast, by the way. I hope they're just like, man, fuck the Northeast. Let's make a movie where we just shit on them. Yeah. And now I just wish it was kind of like that South Park episode where Randy is just fighting other random dads in the fucking crowd. Just getting real, real mad and angry for no reason. Just drunk as shit. You wish, like, like Freddie Prince's dad was doing that? Yeah. Was fighting people? That'd be yeah. good. That'd be R- good. That would be, right? If yeah. he was acting like Randy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, but yeah. Be entertaining. Yeah, but that would have... It'd be stealing from a cartoon. You don't steal from cartoons, Braden. This... Uh, or you don't least... steal from cartoons. Everyone's stealing shit, David. Nah. Not, not these guys. Oh, that was their fat joke. Who cares? They're fat. True. True. The only thing I'll give them that's original is their fat shaming in this movie. Um, also, oh, guys, also, we didn't touch on this really before. Freddie Prince has had voices in his head the whole time he's pitched. Kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole time he's pitching, he's hearing, like, one big mistake. Just hearing like, just, shit like, that people, people told him. Yeah. And now he's hearing positive things. He's hearing, like, Jessica Biel being like... You're going to do great. You're going to do great. Like, allow yourself to be great. He's hearing Augie being like, man, I'm proud as hell you've done what you've done. Uh, Like, now those are the voices he's hearing. And he's just fucking pitching a gem. Yeah. He's pitching great. Jessica Biel's leaving her house, loading up the car. He's like, I want to stop by the stadium. This is big, you know. If if any time you just got doubt, you just got to replace it with confidence. You know, reinforce of good, positive things that you need to say to yourself. And then you're going to succeed. That's... That's the moral to this whole movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And from Freddie Prince, is, he's doing great. Yeah. It's now the eighth inning. Jessica Biel. Oh, no. So he's uh, he's got a no hitter going in the eighth inning. Yeah. No hitter. And Everyone's freaking out. Gives up what looks like it's going to be a bloop single. And Wilmer, playing second base. Does awesome. a diving fucking catch. Awesome diving catch. Saving the hit. Saving the no hitter. Next. So now bottom of the eighth. And when they get done, they, 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 they like leave the inning. He's like, "Yeah, good job." I'm like, "Bro, I would have been freaking the fuck out." You gotta, my- no, that's that's why you're not a, a high level pitcher. You got to stay focused, keep your head in the fucking game. You can't get too worked up over that catch. After the game, after the game, you can go crazy. When he makes that catch, you got you got to stay in the zone. You can have have you ever, ha- have you ever seen a high level pitcher? Myself. Yeah. No, you're not. But like, they'll they'll fucking do like Cooperstown, New York, David. Th- shut the me- fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Because you watch, like, Major League, Clayton Kershaw. If a game he's pitching, he's sitting by himself in the dugout. Players are staying away from him because they're like, just let don't him. Don't they, like, go down, down to the other? Focus. Don't they go down and, like, they warm up or stay down? Like, they they the, don't stay in the bullpen during the game. Oh, okay, they okay. sit in the dugout during the game. But, like, like good pitchers who are pitching well, they'll sit by themselves in the dugout usually. The only pitcher that I can remember that didn't do that is dead. Mm-hmm. And that's why. It's Jose Fernandez. He'd be yucking it up with everyone in the dugout between innings and then go out and just strike them all out and then yuck it up. Then he crashed a boat and killed himself and two other people. Jesus Christ. That's why you don't celebrate during the game. You stay focused. That's right. Keep your head in the fucking game. So he's got no hitter through eight. Um, Wilmer gets on base and then Shaggy hits a two-run inside the park home run. Fuck yeah, Shaggy. Now he's out on the mound. Or no, no, no. So the stepdad from Identity is on the phone, and he's like, you know, I, just, I gotta tell you, we're here in the ninth inning, and I'll, I'll tell you, he's throwing harder. Like yeah. he's, he's talking about how because he's he throwing listened, harder and he listened, getting better. He listened to his brother. Yeah, he wasn't throwing his hard stuff, and now it's late in the game. He's got plenty of juice left. He's mowing it past him. But we're getting a little smoking aces here. We are. Yeah, we are. But this is the cameo that I was talking about. A man sits next to him. Do you know who the man is? No. So I started hysterically laughing. I forgot he was in it. It is Hank Aaron. (laughs) The home run king at the time just comes up and sits next to the guy. No way. And starts asking about about Freddie Prince. (laughs) Just fucking out of nowhere. Hank Aaron just comes and sits down. It's got to be where some of the budget is. And he's like, what's this kid's name? And the guy's like, uh... And like it just that he'd recognize him. He goes, "That's uh, that'd be done. It's, it's Ryan Dunn." <laughs> like 
He's like, you're fucking Hank Aaron. What are you doing here? Man, I just... So Beale, Beale walks up to her sister, says bye to her, gives her a hug. Sister's like, he's got a no-hitter going. And she's like, what's a no-hitter? And she's like, shh. Shh, we can't talk about it. You're going to jinx it. And she's like, oh, okay. And then Beale... Uh, Beale leaves and Freddie Prince watches and then he strikes out the next batter and the stepdad's looking at his radar gun and he goes, now I got I got 95, that can't be right and Frank Aaron says I got 96 yeah. so he's like, yeah, it's not right Yeah, I got 96 <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> so he's throwing, he's throwing much harder now Yeah, he strikes that guy out Augie's out in the outfield Oh, him, Augie and Pete were putting up the K's for the strikeouts. Yeah. And he, he puts a K up on the board and he yells, Heaven's number 11! Two more, Ryan! Two more! Come on! Woo! And then Ryan looks around and the voices in his head are all Jessica Beal now. Oh, uh, fuck yeah. And he calls Shaggy <laughs> to the mound and he goes, I love her. And Shaggy goes, oh. Shit. All right, well, I love her too, but... Come on, let's finish this. Come on, play catch with me now. Play catch with me. And he's like, no. He goes, Knight, wake up. Get in the game. And like the... Well, the coach comes out too. Oh, he, the coach went up to Knight earlier and made him wake up. He goes, yeah. Dunn's got a no-no going. You might want to watch this. In like the seventh inning. Yeah. Um, like Everyone's going to the mound. Everyone comes out. He keeps saying, I love her. And then Knight gets up to the mound. And he goes, morning, sunshine. He goes, fatty here can't touch the slider. And the guy on deck's a sucker for an in- inside curve. Enjoy. And the, the the coach is like, what's, what's going on? He goes, I love her. He goes, well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And the coach was like, so <laughs> cool with it. Yeah. Dude, any other coach would have been like, the fuck are you doing? Well, he, he said that. He said to him, he goes, look, a, a no hitter in the Cape League, it won't even be in the Globe tomorrow. True. The right yeah. girl? She'll be could, with you forever. Yeah. Could last you a lifetime. Yeah. And then he like starts to run the wrong way. And Shaggy's like, hey. Oh, he tells Augie to start the yeah, car. He, he goes, Augie, start the car. Yeah. And he goes, what do you say? He says, start the car. Start the car. He start goes, the car. Well, Pete, get the cooler and let's start the car. Let's start the car. <laughs> <So> they go <laughs> over. He runs off the field and the crowd goes wild, which blows my... They should just be confused. Yeah, and it's they like the announcer, I think... Didn't the announcer start to say some shit too? Like, oh, in heaven's dear, folks. He look goes, what we're looking at here. He goes, in my 50 years of broadcasting, yeah, I have never like- seen anything like this. Ryan Dunn is pulling himself out of a no, out of the game with two outs to go and a no hitter. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and everyone's like cheering him on as if yeah. they understand he's going to get the girl of his dreams. He hops in, hops in the car, and he goes, I love her. And Augie, er, and uh, Pete goes, me too. Who do we love? <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, just drive, drive. And Augie goes, where? He goes, airport. He goes, all right. They're driving to the airport. Uh, Jessica Peele's about to get on a private plane. And they pull up in the car. I don't know that they would have been able to get the car out where they had it. Going yeah, out where you the know, planes are. Yeah, it's there's no way. Unrealistic. But they are. But They're maybe because it's a private, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's a smaller I've, private one to I've, where. I've, ne- I've never been to a, you know, hey, if you're listening to this and you fly private, let us know if that's possible. Yeah. Maybe it is. Yeah, maybe. Who the fuck knows? He pulls, he jumps out of the car, runs up to Jessica Beals and goes, I love her. I mean, I love you. I mean, you, you, I, yeah. I love you. And she's like, oh, she's like, oh, I love you too. It's like, don't go to San Francisco. She's like, I don't want to go to San Francisco. And she's like, but wait, what about the, the no hitter? And then his dad and the scout from Identity pull up. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, the, we'll, yeah, we'll finish yeah, this yeah. movie. We'll, yeah. We're almost done. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. I'm with you. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah. your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 they pull up, they're listening to the radio, and they're like, he did it! Knight finished the no-hitter! And then he's like, "Let's, uh, I love you so much. And she goes, let's be together. Which I hate that line. Yeah. Let's be together. He goes, let's do it. He's like, I don't know where. And then the stepdad from Identity goes, how about Batavia, New York? Just outside of Buffalo, the, the Phillies have a single-A team there called the F- Batavia Mud- Muck Dogs. I fucking butcher it. We're just doing that over. <laughs> the, Phil- the Phillies have a single A team there called the Batavia Muck Dogs. Then the strip club manager from Dexter, who he ran the strip club for the Koshka Brotherhood. Oh uh, yeah, and also like so Quinn was like his dirty cop on the take. He made Quinn take money, oh. and Quinn was dating one of the strippers. And he's like, "We're gonna fucking kill Nadia if you don't play ball with us." Quinn. <laughs> How you feel about that? <laughs> and he's like, well, "I'll play ball." All right. Um, that guy goes. So. uh did Ryan earn some money tonight? 
And he goes, uh, yeah, yeah, he did. He goes, I'm prepared to offer you a, a contract full with a $50,000 signing bonus. And then his dad interjects himself and goes, 75. 75. He goes, I, I beg your pardon? He goes, 75,000 sounds about right. And he just kind of stares at the dad and then looks at Ryan and goes, would that do the trick? Which bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. He'd be like, you know what, now it's 40. Or you can go cut grass to your fucking dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, 75. You have no leverage in this scenario, None. sir. He's like, that do the trick? Everyone cheers. He's like, yeah, they shake hands. Everyone cheers. Guy gives Augie a muck dog's hat. They're all going crazy. <laughs> he kisses Jessica Beale. Credits start to roll, but then it shows. The TV on in the tavern. Ryan Dunn making his first MLB appearance. He's mm-hmm. coming out of the bullpen mid-game. Ken Griffey Jr. is at the plate. Shakes him off. Shakes him off. Gets the pitch he wants. It's a fucking fastball. Tries to blow it past Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. fucking crushes it out of the park. Ryan kind of smiles. The bar's laughing. And they go, first of many. Cheers in. The only reason you can be okay with that and do it is it's Ken. It's one of the greatest baseball players of all time. It's Ken Griffey Jr., if it's a normal player and you smile and everyone laughs and cheers, is, it's fucked up. Yeah. Because it's Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. You're allowed to do that. You'd be like, yeah, what, a, what am I supposed to do? It's Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, they showed the score, too, and it was like 2-5 to five at that point. Ken Griffey Jr., by the way, people made a big deal about this. He was – people were like, he MLB Hall of Fame voting. We're, we're going off in a weird different direction here for a second. Yeah. It's the most bullshit thing in the world. Ken Griffey Jr. was one vote away from being unanimous, like being unanimously voted into the Hall of Fame on his first ballot, Yeah, which at the time was the closest anyone had ever gotten to being a unanimous first ballot Hall of Famer. And people were like, I think that's crazy. I don't, I don't think he should be the closest. He's closer than Babe Ruth was, blah, 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 all this stuff. Who is the one piece of shit voting on the Hall of Fame who's like, no. I don't think Ken Griffey Jr. is a Hall of Famer. That's the most baffling thing. He should be unanimous. Babe Ruth should have been unanimous. Yeah. Hank Aaron. Yeah. Derek Jeter. Like, yeah. There should be way more unanimous Hall of Famers. It's crazy. I believe Mariano Rivera. It's crazy how critic like they're just what like a bunch of critics or something. That yeah, work. They get fucking bad blood. Like he didn't like doing interviews with me. Fuck him. That's what it's. It's crazy. That's wild. It's crazy. It's, it's but like, like who was in charge? Though? The fact that who, who is the one douchebag who's like, I don't think Ken Griffey Jr. is a Hall of Famer. That's why they make it anonymous. Yeah, they don't. You you can. Uh, oh. someone can find out who voted. No. Oh, it's yeah. It's it's ridiculous though. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And that people were like, he shouldn't have been the closest to a unanimous. Some he should have been unanimous. It's crazy. Some dude who sits on his fucking couch. Who has no athletic capabilities? He's like, I'm a I'm a Mariners fan, and I was real upset when Griffey left and went and signed yeah. that big contract with the Reds. So fuck him, man. I almost think, like, at some point, maybe you should just have the Hall of Famers who are still around choose who's next or something. I don't know, something like that. Someone who's like very creditable. Dude, the NFL does the hundred greatest players every season, uh-huh. and it's voted on by the players. Good. It's the best thing. Like yeah. it's so much better than the Pro Bowl and the All Pro shit. Like yeah. it's, it's then, the it's the players like sitting in a room and like ranking all the players. That's a way more rational way to do it rather than a bunch of fucks yeah. who are going to be like, yeah. it's guys guys who play these players are like, oh no, I think Xavier Howard is the. I think he was like the fifteenth best player. Yeah, like, because they didn't play like, for yeah, maybe your Xavier team. Howard's you there. didn't like them or this and that. They're going to like maybe vote lower or some, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. No, it's, 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 yeah, it's great that the NFL does there. Yeah. But guys, that was summer catch. Dude, uh, dude, really quick, bro. Dad. Yeah, I, bro. Dude, bro. Like, <laughs> yes. The How ending. did he know where they were going? What airport? What? Yeah. He wh- grabbed the scout and was like, "Come on, you're coming with us." Yeah. Come, like, like a, a, And the scout is willing to make an offer right there, like not go over. So, so, so that's, that's that happens. Re- that's realistic. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 come up with a uh, shit on the fly without like before writing up paperwork to give to you. He was on the phone earlier. He's just I'm sure he talked to someone and they were like, "Look, we, we trust you. Here's the most you can give him as a signing bonus." Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh and it was either 75 or more. Yeah. I'm guessing. True. Yeah, but basically I'm, guess, I'm guessing if he was only if they told him 50 is the max you can give, he couldn't then agree to 75. But all those people had to leave immediately once when he left. 
and know that he's going to the private airport over here. Like they had to have been following him, but also not doing a very good job. Yeah, because they were thirty seconds behind him. Like they weren't in the frame when yeah. he pulled up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that that it just seemed like at that point they just kind of like. Oh, well, that'd be cute if we could have it all end in this place at the same time. And it makes it easier for us to, like, make an ending for all these stories. Or, well, one story, but all these different characters. But, like, just, just yeah. have an all resolution. Yeah. Finish the movie. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, unrealistic, but. Yeah. I also, like, I I wouldn't have enjoyed another scene where they were no, like, same. oh, let's go meet with the scout now and all that stuff. Like, I get Wrap it the fuck up. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it it was unrealistic, but it actually I I, I I'm glad they did that. Yeah, because <laughs> you're right. I didn't want to see a couple more scenes. And that's uh, that's summer catch, guys. It's uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, you're fine without seeing it. Yeah. If you've seen it, you probably like, you want. I don't think anyone will watch it and absolutely hate it. No, I don't think you'll hate it. I think it's decent enough to watch, and I think like you'll enjoy it enough that you watched it i don't think this is something you would really recommend um but to me for the most i think it was just a little confusing what they were going for like the feel wise because like i like like you said it was a a dramedy kind of thing like a mix between drama romantic yeah romantic kind of yeah but i just felt like sometimes it was like i couldn't tell if they were trying to be comedic in those moments or trying to be dramatic and i just did and i couldn't it's like i felt like the the writer and the director was like telling the actors play it dramatically, but they just felt like even if they played it dramatically, it was going to come off comedic. And I just didn't know if I didn't know. I, I'm just guessing on that point, but yeah, sometimes uh, I didn't know what they were going for. It's, it's a whatever movie. If you watch it, you're not going to be like, Oh, it's such a fucking waste of time. No, no, no. What are they, but like, you're fine. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to go out and watch this. Yeah. But if you did, there is a movie I have to watch this week. Braden's got to watch it too. Oh Yeah. Guys, loyal listener, Dave Bo, David Straley, only person on the on the movie version of the Five Six Kings podcast, only person who's ever made an appearance other than the two of us. Yeah, How shout about out that? to David. How about that, David Straley? Yep, sent me a list of movies, and in one of them he put in parentheses next to it and in all caps, "I fucking hate this movie." So obviously, obviously, you, you, you sent me five movies, and one of them that's the glowing review you're giving. We're doing this movie. We got to do it. Guys, we're doing Drive, starring Ryan Gosling. Came out in 2011. It's an action movie, crime movie. Runtime's an hour and 40 minutes, too. I appreciate that, David Straley. And, and it is it is known as a cult classic. Like, no holding back on that. They they, they definitely review it as a, as a cult classic. And I would say to everyone, definitely go check out the soundtrack. Like, I mean, watch the movie for sure. But, like, the movie is a vibe. The soundtrack is amazing. Definitely check out the songs. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a, it's it's a fun movie. I've seen it. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to give anything away. But um, the music is phenomenal. The whole movie's a vibe. Definitely watch it out. Uh, Ryan Gosling is just you know as dreamy as ever. But yeah, it's it's fun. So dreamy. So fucking dreamy. So dreamy. And guys, if you want to watch it, it's available on Vudu and Amazon Prime for two ninety nine. Look at that. Or if you want to spend more money. You can get it on YouTube or Google Play for three ninety nine. Oh fuck yeah! I've never seen it. I'm excited to watch a movie that David Straley fucking hates. Mm. And David Straley, I got a little message for you. If I don't fucking hate this movie, then you deserve to die a traitor's death. Yep, that's right, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Both of them at five six kings. That's f i v e s i x. K I N G S. Subscribe to the podcast. Please download the episodes if you listen to them. Leave us a rating. Leave us a review. Say nice things about me. Mean things about Braden. I want all the criticism. Send all the mean shit. Don't uh, don't leave comments on our YouTube page. I'll never look at it. I I don't know that Braden will. Maybe. Also, Braden Braden only uploads like half of the episodes to YouTube. Yeah, anyways. sometimes I'm a little late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully no one's like, oh, I only listen to this on YouTube because we're, then we're fucked. No, no, don't worry. I'm going to get them to you guys. Don't worry. But guys, check out Drive. And Follow don't us. forget, it's every motherfucking Monday. I was going to set Braden up for that, but instead he decided to cut me off. 
to to throw in the catchphrase that I I every episode since he started saying it, we've had a point where I set him up to say it. I don't know if he was worried that I was just going to not do it this time and be like, no, just end it, just end it, just end it. we're done, we're done. Yeah, I was, so I was he, worried. So he cut in. But guys, check out Drive. Check out every movie the Five Six Kings have reviewed. Mm-hmm. Let's know what you think of the movies. And guys, send us your ideas. Please. Doing David Straley's next week. But in a couple weeks, we're going to be doing another fan suggestion. Maybe it could be yours. Imagine that. Wow. Imagine that. And guys, you'd get to hear it. You would get to hear it with your ears. When we record the podcast, because Braden, when do we record the podcast? Hmm. Don't don't do a joke. Just fucking say the catchphrase. Every motherfucking Monday. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out.